gotta determine, we gotta determine who we're talking to here. So if I tell somebody that God loves them in their sin, I'm actually doing them harm. You see? Because now they're feeling better about their sin and that God loves me anyway, even though I'm this way. It's not true. Because God's love, God has a benevolent love for all mankind in that he wants them to be saved. But as they hold on to their sin, they're enemies of God, right? And God's wrath is upon them. But Jesus' love came, he came so that they could come out from under the wrath of God and be in the love of God. For this is love, right? Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments, right? According to the new covenant. Right, which is which is the righteousness of the law, not all the 600 plus laws, but I'm talking about what Jesus preached in the New Testament. And so, if somebody calls himself a sinner as a believer, they're deceived, because nowhere in the Bible does it call the believers sinners. And after this, the judgment. Are you ready to give an account to Jesus Christ with how you live this life? How you live this life will right. determine Praise God. where you live all of the next life and eternity. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Because if you're not ready, let me tell you that he's ready to judge you. And if he's ready to judge you, you ought to be ready to be judged. You ought to be prepared. Just like you prepare for the exams here, just like you prepare for the test that you have, because you pay a lot of money, your parents pay a lot of money to get you here. Oh my friends, how much more for the eternal judgment? Shouldn't you be prepared for the ultimate test? Jesus Christ, he says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And many people who are outside of Christ, in fact, all people that have not surrendered their life to Christ, they have wicked things come out of their mouth. And it just shows the state of your heart. It shows us that you're in need of a savior. And Jesus Christ is that savior. Thanks for Jesus driving, is brother. the only one that can yeah. set you free from your sin. You may be coming here to have a better life, to have a, a good future, to have a good career. But my friends, apart from Jesus, it's all vanity. Apart from Jesus Christ, it's all vanity of vanity. Everything under the sun will perish. Everything you own, everything you have, cannot be taken with you on the day of judgment, cannot be taken with you when you die. And you know, as we hear people blaspheming God's name, it should remind you that people are angry with God. It should remind you that people one day will have to give an account for their blasphemy because the Bible says that no blasphemer will inherit the kingdom of God. No blasphemer. 
Are you a blasphemer of God today? Amen. Are you living holy <coughs> for the Lord today? We live in a culture where people are so proud and Jesus Christ, he preached with such humility. He preached to be humble. He preached that the proud will be resisted from God. And you know, so many people are proud. So many people have the pride of life. So many people have the lust of the flesh. Oh my friends, let this not be named among you. You must come to Jesus, you must repent, you must turn from your sin. You know, and Jesus, he says you must be born again. He says it to Nicodemus who came to him out of fear of man at night. He said to Jesus that, that we know that you are a teacher sent from God. You know, but they, they love the praises of man rather than the praises of God. And many of you love the praises of man rather than of God. You know that if you were to follow Jesus, you have to give up your, your reputation. You have to give it all up for him. We come out here as fools for Christ. And many of you will look like a fool for sin. But I'd rather to look like a fool to the world than a fool to God. Because the Bible says in Psalm 14, 1, that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And there's many people who claim here today that there is no God. But my friends, it's just the state of the heart that, that clings to doctrines such as atheism or agnosticism or any other religion for that matter. If you realize that if you, if you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is real, then you understand I better remember. that your soul is in danger. But instead of reacting, responding to the gospel in such humility, yeah, okay, so if you respond in pride, this one, you turn to doctrine. I'll be uploading devil. not this Monday, but next Monday. So, so text me, <laughs> like, but my friends, that's not gonna do it. Next Your week, will not do Tuesday, on the day of or just text me every day. Okay. And in fact, if you stump a Christian, it doesn't. Because I'll find it. Humans, we I'll don't find have it. all the answers, but we do know that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one that can save your soul. Are they hitting people with pies? Oh. <laughs> oh, my friends. Jesus Christ will come again to judge this world in righteousness. He will judge this world whether they're ready or not. And he, he's not coming like he did at his first coming as a baby in a manger. And it won't be funny on that day either. On the day of judgment, your mockery will not stand. In fact, all mockers will be sent to the lake of fire. And you know, sometimes, sometimes the best response to your folly is laughter, because that's what God will do. That's what God will do to your, to your, your folly. Because you see, especially here in America, you have no excuse to, to withhold your soul from, from God. You have no excuse, and you will, you will have no excuse. You, you could go to any bookstore and get you a Bible. You could download a Bible app on your phone. And my point is saying that it, it, the Bible is so accessible to all of you, and that's just gonna mean more judgment for you after you hear the word of God and you turning at the rebuke of the wise. My friend, Jesus Christ one day, Jesus, he will hold you accountable.
All my friends, the Bible says. Yeah, amen, bro. Are you guys with a group? Oh, we're just a bunch of brothers in Christ that yeah. love to preach the gospel. We are at the... Uh, no. Uh -huh. I love it, though. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad you guys are here. Yeah, praise yeah. God. I mean, we all go to the same home fellowship. Cool. He's the pastor. At the sign. So. Uh, I'm curious, like, well, how do you guys feel about uh, the law and the Torah and stuff? Do you guys still feel that applies? What about it? Uh to Christians today, do you feel that they ought to continue to follow the law of the Torah? What does the New Testament say? In my opinion, Jesus says yes, you ought to. Oh, really? So Jesus said to obey the Sabbath, wear mixed fibers, keep the dietary laws, he said that? Well, yeah, he was saying that he came to fulfill that and that he uh, expects us to as well. He said that. Can you show me a scripture where Jesus said to keep okay. doing it? Yeah. I'm asking what your opinion is. Well, I'm, I'm going to go to the Bible because yeah. so, every time. So do you, and I do believe that the Bible could support that view. Well, that's why I'm asking you if you can show me scripture that says it, that Jesus commands us to follow all so, 617 so I'm, I'm, laws of the Old it's Testament. It's not 617. How many is it? It's closer to 100 because it, the way it divides out. 100? If you're a you sure priest, about that? Yeah. It, oh. it, it depends on what you are in society. Okay. If you're a priest, it's a lot more. If you're a farmer, you got a certain set of laws. If you're a, what about circumcision? That's in the law. Okay, I'm asking your opinion. Well, as, as a script, scripture. scripture clearly says that circumcision does not avail anything. It's not required. Circumcision of the heart, circumcision of the body, of the, the body. Flesh, sure. According yeah. to the law of Moses. So that's one thing that's definitely not in effect. Another thing, if you read in Romans... So, so you're taking the, the stance that it is no longer in effect. Colossians 2, Romans 14. Is that your stance? Paul deals... I'm, I'm trying to, I'm answering you from Scripture. Okay. If you read Colossians 2 and Romans 14, Paul deals with eating of meats, celebrating holy days, and things like that. Don't, don't let any man judge you in those things. Okay. Because they've, they were a foreshadow of what's to come. You're, you're not required to do the holy days, you're not required to keep the Sabbath, you're not required to keep the dietary laws, you're required to keep the righteousness of the law, which is what Jesus kept. He said, if you love me, obey my commandments well, in he, the new he covenant. Followed the law. Yeah, because he was Jewish no, under he was under Nazarite. that under that Nazarite. Under that covenant. No, he was a Nazarene. Yeah, not a Jew. He was he was Jewish from the tribe of Judah. That's a Jew. Yeah. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. That's so what a Jew only, is. Only only so what happened to all the other tribes? I don't know where they are. I mean, so like God knows. Jews only reference the tribe of the of Judea. Well, no. I mean, in the New Testament, when you when you mention a Jew, it's talking about the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But wasn't there a story in the Bible where maybe it was there? There was two twins, and and they described the twins in the mother's womb, Jacob and Esau, as being one Gentile and one Jew. How does that happen? Well, one, one, what do you mean one Gentile, one Jew? In the womb, they described Jacob and Esau as okay. being... Okay, well, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob brought forth the 12 tribes. Gentile and one being Jew. There wasn't really any Jew at that point. It was Jacob, and after him was the 12 tribes of Israel. He's, he's a patriarch. So how did you're, that... You're going all over the place. So let, let's well, get no, back, I mean, let's get I back mean, to my the... My original question was just like, do you feel the law applies to us today? All, and, and, you know, you can tell me yes or no, and then back it up however you please. According to the new covenant, in Jeremiah and, 31... So the way you interpret it, you say no, it doesn't... Well, I asked you for anymore. scripture. I've given you scripture. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair so. enough. I'm not... I'm just curious yeah. for you to take a stance. You know, do you believe it doesn't apply to us now? Not all intent? laws from the Old Testament Mosaic Covenant apply to New Testament believers, no. Okay. And no. Uh, what about the rapture? How do you feel about that? Do you believe what that, about it? that we will be raptured before the tribulation? Well, Scripture says that after the tribulation of those so, days. So you believe first the tribulation happens, then, of course, then Pre, we're Pre tribulation raptured. rapture doctrine came out in the 1800s. I totally yeah. agree, and that's yeah. why I'm curious to talk to other Christians and see yeah. where they're at on these things. Yeah, I know. What about the holidays? What about holidays? Like Chris, uh, Christmas. Easter. I mean, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I don't condemn anybody that does. Sure, I don't either. I mean, Jesus uh, wasn't born on December 25th. I know everybody's on their own journey, but uh, I'm just, I, I like to talk to other people. Jesus doesn't, wasn't born on December 25th. I mean, not. we know the history of Christmas. Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't celebrate Christmas, but if there's do. any holidays that are biblical, it would be like Hanukkah, 
Passover, things like that. Those are biblical holidays. But it's not required for salvation. I mean, if you want to celebrate those things, I mean, that's okay. Yeah. I don't ever want to split people apart over um, non-heaven or hell issues. You know, just well, I mean, I mean, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, Christmas, Easter, it's not a you're not damned to hell or anything like that. But I I don't celebrate Christmas, Halloween because of the roots of them. Sure. I don't even do Easter because of Ishtar and all that. You know. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's some other common. common I mean, what, what 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 what's the purpose of you coming up here? I mean, I'm working over here, oh, okay. and I went to go have some. Lunch. Are you are you born again believer? I am. Yeah. And uh, are you, are you still? Do you, would you consider yourself still a sinner? Of course. Okay. Can you show me in scripture where the believers are considered still sinners? Why would you consider yourself a sinner? Because I have sinned, and I am a sinner. But but. Who, who told you that you were a sinner? Who uh, told you that? It, it is the way things are. It is reality. Okay, what does the Bible teach, though, about what Christ does for it sinners? It teaches that we are all sinners. No, it doesn't teach that we all are sinners. It and says we that have all, have sinned and fallen short of the all have sinned. Mm -hmm. It's a past tense word. Right, so nowhere in the Bible. So I, I, I am a sinner. If I have done this in past no, tense. No, no, no. So in scripture. You're saying that, I mean, I get the argument of uh, you've now been washed clean, and so. Where does it no say in the Bible that a believer is a sinner ever? Dude. Ever. It, Go to scripture. Show me. Are you, are you arguing that I'm not a sinner? What I'm saying is, a true believer in Christ is no longer a sinner. They don't practice sin. They don't walk in sin. They've been they don't practice, cleansed. They will sin again. No, that's not that's not what it says in Scripture. The Bible does not say that you that's will what definitely Paul sin. It for. He said, no. should we uh, should we uh, go on sinning and let grace abound, insinuating that yes, he's been saved, but he will no, be you just twisted that Scripture. No. Paul was coming against people like you that were taking the grace of God for lasciviousness. Team, I don't know yet. I'm trying to find out. Okay. Well, because there's a lot of professing Christians. If you call yourself a sinner, then you're not with Christ, because there's no sinners in the kingdom of God. There's ex-sinners. Paul was saying that. He said, "Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound?" No, God forbid. We exactly. should. We shouldn't exactly. continue in sin. And exactly. what does he say right after that? I don't know. Go okay, ahead. I'll pull it out here. Oh no. Okay. Um, wait, wait. What? What are you running from? This is the Bible. I'm not running, but my. I'm just. I don't think I'm gonna get any forward motion with you in any way. What do you mean? Because, you know, you're, you're dodging my questions. And I haven't dodged any question. I've given you scripture. you're acting like we're not on the same team here. Like, because you call yourself a sinner. I There's have no, sinned. Okay, you have sinned. Like, you're trying, to, you're trying yeah. to get detailed on semantics when, look, dude, we're on the same team. I, I don't know yet, bro. Exactly. You're I don't know. I, you should, Jesus said, line. well, listen, you're trying to find dividing lines on things that don't really matter. No. I'm talking about something that's salvation-based. No, Are not. you a sinner or not? Yes. No, you're not. <laughs> Bro, the whole point of Jesus' blood being shed on the cross is to, is to make us clean. Is to clean us from our sins. And right. You're so on when you're... No, it's not I get, semantics. I get First Corinthians argument. 6. Yes, I have sinned. First okay, Corinthians I get your argument. Do you sure, still no, walk in sin? But I will sin again, so sure. Why do you think like that? Is that the mind of Christ? Are you God? How do you know I'm going to sin? How do you know? Does, because does Jesus? You, because you will fall short. Where does it say you will fall short? All in the Bible. Show That's me. That's what the law is for, to show you that we can't. No, read Romans 7. At the end of Romans 7, what the law does. That's what the law does to a person. You know, okay. You're it, it shows you. Questions. You're not stating, making no, I, what do you What do you believe? I'm you telling know. you that if you're a sinner, you're not born again. Okay. That's that's bi basic biblical principle. Okay. Jesus came to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so you're unhappy with me using the word sinner. No, I'm not unhappy with anything. I'm, I'm concerned about your soul. If you consider yourself a sinner, and do you walk in sin every day? Do you sin every day? Do you not? <laughs> no. You're it's, fooling yourself, dude. Who's and, fooling? And so, so and see, for, for you to for you to you're, say that shows pushing, is very telling. You're going to be pushing other people away from sinners, yes. From actually gaining grace in in. What's hope? grace? Jesus. Okay, let me show you what grace teaches you in Titus two. Okay, Titus two. We'll go to Titus. This is what the grace of God teaches you. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men 
teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? So that, look, what it says, and purify unto himself a peculiar people. So that's what real grace teaches you. Real grace doesn't teach you, hey, we're all sinners, we're going to sin, so God will just forgive me when I do sin, because God knows we're going course, to sin. that's not what I'm advocating for. That's what it sounds like. Well, it, you're not listening then. Yes, I am. Not clearly. Okay, so you you confess that you're a sinner. You're, you're trying to make me say things that I'm, I'm not. No, I'm asking questions and you're answering okay, them. Go ahead. You said you're a sinner. Uh, yeah. You said you sin every day. And that it's amazing that I could think that I won't sin every day. So that shows me, you know, Jesus said, ye shall know them by their fruit. Mm -hmm. So how can a good tree bear bad fruit? How, how can an evil tree bear good fruit? There's a false doctrine in American churches that we're all sinners and we're all going to continue and say, that's not the church that Jesus cleansed, you understand? That's not what the Bible teaches, my man. The Bible teaches freedom from sin. He who the sun sets free. I, I totally shall, agree with these things. You agree with that, but yet you don't practically walk in that. Because you I, don't believe that Christ can do it I in you. You're really just kind of like hang, hung up on semantics when, you know, and that's why I'm saying I think you're going to cause more problems in the body of believers by, you know, I, there's a guy I work with who's, who you Narrow is the of. way, bro. I narrow. totally agree. It's narrow. I totally agree, but I, I don't think, uh, like, I can teach you the word of God cause problems. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what I'm doing. I'm the giving you the word. The word of God will cause problems. Okay, so then, so then it's not a problem to preach the word of God when it says. No, I'm totally about it. And okay, so when he's giving you the word of God about Christians living a holy life, and those who have grace overcoming sin in this life, you're saying, no, you can't do that. No, I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying... So you're saying you won't. There's another way of saying I can't. Well, sure, you won't. So that's another way of saying I can't. So you're just using no, the word. No, 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 Okay. Jesus did once. I'm not talking about Jesus, I'm talking about but us. But yeah, you are going to sin. No, that's not true. You're a liar. That's not true. Look at this, look at this. Listen to this in Second Peter, man. This is talking about false teachers. Having eyes full of adultery and that, my man, my man. And that cannot cease from sin. you to be perfect on your own. Now you're going to straw man. Now you're straw manning. That's right. You're going to say it's us doing our own strength. No one said that. No one said that at all. It's us doing our own strength. That's right. They do all things to be first. So is your contention that when you do sin again, that you will be forgiven? You said when. Yeah. That's completely unbiblical. That's right. The Bible says if. It doesn't say when, it says if. But when you do. No, you said when. Okay, when you do. <laughs> See, he's... Your mind is completely How do you know your... Yeah, that's not the mind of Christ, bro. You don't have the mind of Christ. You need to repent of your sin and believe what Jesus can do in your life. And I do. Every day? Sure. You sin every day. That's not Don't you? That's not repentance, bro. No. I don't sin every day, no. You've, ne you, you've never... Now you're saying never. We said not even close to sinning every day. Now well, you're, you're saying never, never too. You're <coughs> saying you're no, never going to sin from that. I didn't say never. Yeah, you, you, said you, no, you, said, you said you're going to sin. I said no. I'm not guaranteed I'm going to sin. That's right. I don't know the future. What's going to happen? So, so, if I so, sin, so are I you really fight. contending that, that you guys are going to live a perfect life from the, here? To Jesus the commands you, be but, perfect even as your heavenly Father is perfect. So you're thinking that you are going to be perfect from okay. here till you Do you left. agree that Jesus commands you? How about that question? Do you think No, you how about what Jesus said? Okay. Okay. We contended for from the beginning yeah. is that we can. Okay. Not that we okay. will. Fair enough. But you're saying we can. Okay. So you so that's the you don't live God. That you're, that you're in, in you have a, Do you think that not only can you don't go to will, because I don't have the answer to this. Okay, okay, so you, you just believe that you can from this point till the day you die live a perfect life. Of course. That's what the Bible says. And you think, okay, what are the chances? Of that I have no idea chances are. I know what's going to happen. If you were, if you were to spitball it, well, what are the chances? I'm not spitballing. You take it an educated guess. Well, listen, it makes no difference if I say if I say even 24 hours. You say no, you're a liar because you sin every day just like me. That's what you're going to say. No, I mean I'm I'm just trying to get you. Can to be you go 24 hours without sin? Maybe I don't know. So Is you it, can. Maybe. So it's not a problem of ability, it's a problem of willingness. I Try mean, maybe I could go two seconds, too. Okay, can you go five seconds? Maybe. How about ten? Probably. How about an hour? And that's what I'm saying. So are you, in, is that your argument? So wait a minute now. So now you're agreeing. This is, now you're telling me you can go 24 hours. This is hours. the problem right so here. Ago, you were telling him, <coughs> you you're lying. the rest of his life, is what I was telling him. No, no, you said 24 hours. I said he won't go the rest of his you life. You said he wouldn't go 24 hours. I doubted it, yeah. 
because I, I don't necessarily think that this is... So the where is the doubt lie? The doubt lie in, in, in his human ability to do so. Wait a minute now. Can you do all things through Christ? Thank you. you. Yes. If, will you, you. if you walk in the Spirit, will you not fulfill the lust and flesh? Romans 8. So, now, can, now, back to my original question. I see where you guys are going with all this. Yeah, to the Bible. Do you think that... Okay. You're saying that... Are you saying that you can live from this point till the day you I've already die? answered that question. Answer and yes. you said yes. What are the chances of that happening? I don't know what the chances are. Zero, you know, like, okay, do you think there's a point zero zero one I, I, chance of that happening? No, it's much higher than that. Much Let's try this on for size. You 50 chance of happening? Yeah, yeah, it's around there. You think it's a 50-50 shot yeah, that you're perfect sure. from here to the day you sure, die? Sure, sure. Why not? Oh, God. You think it's impossible... Because listen, you just blaspheme God. Yeah. One. No. You said, yeah. "Oh, right? you're, not, you're not like praying to God. Oh, okay. You're using Fair your enough. name in vain. Fair you're enough. expressing the disgust of your heart for what I said by using God's I'm, name. I'm, I'm disappointed. Yeah. You don't understand. Yeah, but you don't use God's name that way. Fair enough. And you know, yeah, you can call out. You're right. I am a sinner. I recognize that. I wish you would too. And I wish you. I will never recognize, recognize that. <laughs> bro. That not true. <laughs> okay. You don't, okay. bro. You, your your problem is is you don't believe God. Nah, man. You can't bless him. And neither can you. I'm not a sinner. We're not sinners. Of course you are. That's what you say. That's what you say, and the devil says, but not what Jesus says, man. Not what Jesus says. Repent of your sin and be born again. It's ironic that you want to keep the law of Moses, but you want to keep the law of God. That's right. But have everlasting life. Most people know that verse, John 3. Sabbath, the feasts aren't going to help you, man. But what comes right after? Keep God's holy moral law. That say they believe. It's incredible. He who believes is not condemned. Now, bro, it's not ironic. Huh. Not but I just preached on this Sunday. Yeah. I know, right? Matthew 5, 7, That's right. right. Yeah, the first thing he was semi quoting was Matthew 5, 7. That's right. If you say right. you believe yeah, in Jesus, but you it's, have no He came up and was splitting you hairs over non-essential stuff. You say you have faith. Somewhat. Yeah. Do you want to know then, it doesn't seem like he was saying you have to keep the law, but he was obviously seeing if we kept it. Right. Then when it came to the major thing, he was like, oh, it's semantics. No. That's the problem in your life is sin. It's this it's this false doctrine of I mean you already know. Says what's your opinion? I'm going to go to the word. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. To obey him. I was looking at 2 Peter, I think it's 2 Peter. Where he talks about the false teachers. It literally says who cannot cease from sin. <laughs> Talking about the false teachers. So, what's the opposite of that? Okay. Huh? Faith that's he's only a mouth profession, but no heart change. Okay, he's smoking. Friends, that's a I saw some smoke in his mouth. That's just pity. That's a humble yourself. Of its vapor, cigarette, but he's smoking. See yourself in oh, truth. Man. Friends, as you are walking right now, you're not right with God. If you're well, sinning every single day, he's the truth. If you're right. not right with God, you, you need to again. repent. That's a word that many he people don't like to hear he nowadays. <laughs> we need to stop doing that. You know, and, and, and you live in a world. Man. That's scary, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. Yeah. Scary it's scary, bro. I mean, he's like literally. I Matthew seven, right there. I'm gonna be honest too. Stop sinning. That's a loving message. Just like if you were out. It's like they try to project themselves onto us. Like he's walking in his own strength, and he can't stop sinning because he's walking in his own strength, and therefore he's projecting that on us. Ironically, in Acts 15, Peter said to the council. Which we and our fathers were not able to bear. Yeah. Talk about the law of Moses. Right. But now when we are able to, First John five three, when we are in His commandments, we are not a burden to keep. First John chapter thirteen, we are able to keep it, not more than we're able to bear temptation. Yeah. He reverses it. Right. So he wants to try to keep stuff he can't keep. Right. Yeah. And the stuff he can keep, he can't keep. There's no, there's no hope outside of Jesus, friends. There's no hope outside of Jesus Christ. There's all the world, all the world can offer you. There's no hope in it. There's no hope in trying to get a degree and get a high paying job. Calling a born again believer who's truly walking in holiness a sinner is like slapping Christ in the face. No yeah, because it's his work. It's his work. That's doctrine of demons, man. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I was trying to think him. back to who it is. Yeah. It's just the devil, man. You know, yeah. Bro. yeah. It's the world. Narcissism. Yeah. He yeah. got into the church through so Augustine. Yeah. In this world. You know, yeah. You know, TikTok, but this Snapchat, goes back to the devil. Instagram, yeah. Facebook. 
all types of influences I mean, that are filling your mind. We come out yeah. here and influence you to the kingdom of yeah. God. Because, friends, none of this stuff will satisfy you. It'll leave you empty. But Jesus Christ will fill you. Only he can fill you. No one else. Today, come brother. to him. Yeah. Turn to Jesus. Turn from your <coughs> sin. Turn from your fornication. You know, it may feel good now, but it won't, it won't be pleasurable in the end. Turn from your drunkenness. Turn from your idolatry. Friends, these are all going to damn the soul. You know, your sin is pleasurable. You may feel good in your rebellion. But friends, one day it's not going to feel so good when you're standing before God and he's about to cast you into hell. It won't feel good then, friends. So that's why we, we urge you now to humble yourself. Amen. To turn to Jesus while it's still time. While he still is calling those to repentance, turn to Jesus while you have conviction in your heart because your sin should cause you to be convicted. The Holy Spirit is, is the convictor of sin. And he's convicting this world to repent because God is, Jesus has set aside a day in which he will judge this world in righteousness. Amen. And unless you repent, you will perish, friends. That's not God's will for you. That's not God's will that you should perish in your sin. But friends, God, is, God will send sinners to hell. It's the truth. Turn from your sin, friends. Amen. God's love was manifested in Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God, who came from glory preordained, predetermined, and came down as a man through a virgin. And God's love was manifested in Christ Jesus, the express image of God the Father, to take upon himself the sins of the world. The sins of the world. First to Israel, and then to the rest of the world, the Gentiles. And he suffered and died on a cross <clears throat> and shed his blood as an atonement for sin. That whoever would believe on him, repent of their sins, believe on him, and accept what he is offering will be born again. See, the blood of Jesus is available to everybody but it's not appropriated to everybody if you don't turn from your sin. <clears throat> and sin is a transgression of God's moral law. Jesus said, I tell you, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. Jesus said, if you hate your brother without a cause, you're a murderer. If you fornicate, homosexuals, transgenders, liars, blasphemers, thieves, will not have their place in the kingdom of God. And there's a lot of talk about love in America today. Love is love, love wins. But what kind of love is that? It's not God's love, it's your love. It's emotional, it's lustful, it's fleshly. It's not real love. Yes, God is love, but it's not the love you think it is. Scripture says that love does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. And what is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. The truth is, is that all have sinned at some point in their life. Not that all are sinners, but all have sinned at some point in their life before Christ 
all have sinned and come short of God's glory, meaning we're destitute of God's glory, therefore we have need of it. Whether you're a sinner or a born-again believer, we have need of the glory of God. God bless you, ma'am. That's not very nice. No, we're spreading love. I'm actually talking about God's love. Where have you been? You're the one who's hateful, flicking off a person who's talking about God's love. You see, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. That's the love of the world. You don't really have love because you don't love the truth. You hate people that tell you the truth. Don't you understand that you're on the way to the lake of fire in your sin? Don't you understand? I know you might think that you're in your pride and you're having a good time. You follow your sorority, you follow your fraternities, you follow your culture, you follow your school, you follow your sports team, you follow a, a presidential candidate, you follow politics, you follow the latest TikTok trend or the latest Instagram trend, you follow a lot of things. But you, but Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, follow me. Huh? No, no. Yeah. Mockers will not have their place in the kingdom of God. Actually, you are. You just responded. Don't be deceived. You're a mocker. You're a mocker, young lady. You have a good day. Turn to Jesus. You're going to end up in hell if you don't. What a hateful crowd we have today. So full of hatred and bigotry against the truth of the gospel. Why are you so hateful in your heart that you hate the truth? We're here because we love you and want to tell you the truth. Don't listen to fake Christians that tell you you're okay in your sin when you're not. Don't listen to fake Christians that tell you love is love and Jesus just came to hug you. No, Jesus came to call you to repentance. Repentance from sin. Come here, sir. Come here. Come here. Come here, sir. I can tell you're a seed snatcher, so come here. Let's, let's see what... Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Bring it. Are you... A, you're, you're, I bet you you're a proclaiming Christian, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so All what is love? Love is loving somebody and accepting them for who they are, right? No. Yes, it is. That's well, not God's it? love. So that, but did, didn't Jesus have eat with sinners? Jesus had a table... He didn't sin with sinners. He did not sin with sinners, but right. he ate with them and he okay. shared the gospel with them. And so, so what, are, what are we doing? So, but then, so what is love again? It's not acceptance. It's okay. not tolerance. So if that's not it, then what's your definition? It's the biblical definition okay, in 1 biblical? Corinthians 13. Okay. Love okay. does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. Yes. That's love is long-suffering. So does love judge? What? Actually, yes. It does. Jesus, how, how said, does it Jesus said in John to judge righteous judgment. Yeah. Paul wrote that a spiritual man judges all things and is rightly mm -hmm. judged by no man. Yeah. Hypocritical judgment and condemning judgment is yeah. not right. 
Condemning meaning that I'm telling you that I have the power to send you to hell, mm -hmm. like, the, like they did in the Inquisition, and burn you at the stake. Mm -hmm. But ju you judge. Everybody judges. Yes. Did you, I make it right? But you, yes. Depending on the type of judgment, if it's yeah. righteous judgment, it's okay. Meaning, we're telling people the truth, hoping that they'll repent from their sin. Yeah. So you, you seem like the type of person. Correct me if I'm wrong. You see a homosexual, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to tell them that the homosexual? Do, do you believe that homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of God? Uh, no, I believe that homosexuals will enter the kingdom. Yeah. Okay, show me the scripture. So let's look at this. Whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. What does belief what in him mean? On? But believing in him doesn't mean that you're not, doesn't mean that you're perfect. Actually, I'm Jesus, simple. hold on, hold on, man. See, this is the typical false doctrine of demons in America. Is it? Yes. You, now you're walking down a steep slope. Let's no, see we're not. Let's see we're gonna, me. I'm going to bring scripture. You. No, gotcha. you don't got me. Just chill, man. I'm listen, chilling. listen to the word <laughs> of God. Me, I'm fine. <laughs> the word of God says, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. So if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, yep. it's going to show by what comes out of your life. Yes. Right. Jesus yep. said, you shall know them by their fruit. Jesus, Jesus defined in Matthew 19 that marriage is between a man and a woman. Yes, it did. That he, okay, you, you agree yeah, with that? I agree with that. So if you're a homosexual, so if you're a homosexual, yeah. according to 1 Corinthians 6, 9, mm -hmm. you're in sin and you're on the way to the lake yeah. of fire. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So let me ask you this question. Okay, sir. hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, don't run away from this. Because right literally right. just just a second right ago, right right right. you said homosexuals will make it into the kingdom of God. They absolutely will. Okay, like, according to what scripture? This is why I'll tell you this right here, okay? So you said, whoever loves me will follow my commandments. Do you follow God's commandments 100% fully every single day? Abiding in Christ, yes. So you don't sin? G show me in the Bible where it calls believers sinners. Excuse Never me. once. No, all believers are sinners. We're all sinners, but we're saved. Show me in the Jesus. Bible. Hold on. Who told you that? There's only one perfect person. Who told you that? Who told you that? that time and time again. Show me in so, the Bible. Hold on. No, 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 no. Don't run away you, from this. But you haven't answered Don't run away yet. from this. You Don't run away from I'm, a, I'm answering questions. with Scripture. Okay. Okay? Show me in the Bible, one, where it calls the believers sinners, and two, where it says they're going to continue to walk in sin as a believer. Show me. Okay. So let's look at this. Who were, uh, You're not giving me scripture. Most important. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about scripture right now. But here's the thing. This is the thing you gotta understand. This is the thing you gotta understand. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. When you're having a conversation with somebody, and this is my whole point in this, when you're having a conversation with somebody to reach them, reach them about the gospel, this, how many people come You don't have the gospel. Hey, you don't have any good news. Hey, you're interrupting me. I'm trying to talk to you and have a question. I'm, you're I'm snatching seeds here. from people, telling us that they're, you don't have to listen to them. Jesus loves you. Yeah, because right? I'm spreading the love of Jesus. Because here's the How thing. is it love hey, to I tell talk, them that they're... Oak? No, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off. Wait, how is it love... Listen to you. How is it love to tell people not to listen to gospel preaching when they're in their sin and on the way to hell? How is that love? I anybody don't listen to gospel preaching. I gave the gospel. I said that Jesus loved them. The point I'm trying to make here right here is you guys are coming out here. I don't disagree agree with any of this. I believe that Actually, you do. You just said homosexuals will enter the kingdom of God. Yeah, because that's a fact. That's no, a it's not a fact. Yes, because all, yeah. You haven't shown me can, scripture can to finish? back it up. Can I finish? You've yet to let me finish. This is your, this is your, this is your struggle right here. I appreciate you. Uh, like, you I don't. believe you're a believer. Listen, 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 listen. Do me a favor. Yeah. Stop with all the fluff. What's the fluff? This, oh, I appreciate you. I'm glad you guys are out here. Oh, I, I, I all that is all front. Okay, then I won't, I won't okay. show that love. That's, a, that's fine. If you don't no, 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 it's not real love. It's fake. It's fake love. It's okay. fake. Okay. I'm 41 years old. I've seen a lot of people. I've been around a lot of young people. I know what's yeah. fake and I know what's real. A okay. Age, ain't, age is not a, a directly uh, relate to wisdom. I'm just being that's real. true, but right now it, it does. I've been in the Lord for 20 years okay. and, I, and I've been walking, and this isn't any, any a credit to me. It's, by, yeah. it's from my Savior. Yeah. You have a false gospel. That's a pretty okay. statement to make. It is because you're speaking unbiblical statements and opinions. What if I said it's unbiblical? That we're all sinners and we're going to continue in sin as believers. That homosexuals are into the kingdom of God. That's nowhere in scripture. So can I ask you some questions now? Sure. You've lectured me and that's fair. So I got a couple questions. First one I want to ask is, hey, come on here. I believe that all this stuff is simple, right? Hey, atheists, that's not believing in God. Homosexuality, we know that that's a sin from the Bible. We see that all over fornicators. We understand that. We understand that, that being a Muslim is idolatry. We understand all of these things. We know these things. But I want to know, who today has walked up to you and said, hey, I'm seeing this sign and I want to get saved today. Does anybody come up to you and say uh, that There's sign? fruit, but that's irrelevant. Why is that because irrelevant? Because I'm not going to, I'm not going to boast in myself and what we do. Because God knows the fruit that comes out of this ministry. So the point is, let's stop looking at everybody else and let's focus on you yourself. Okay. 
But what do you walk in? What do you here believe? Disciples? Over here to tell us about Jesus. You're not a disciple because we're you said disciples. you're a sinner. No. No, Jesus said if you're my disciple, you take up your cross every day and follow me. His disciples were sinners. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Peter denies him three times. Okay, that was a sin. Did he repent from that? That's Peter actually Peter though. actually writes in his letter that we have access to the divine nature, that those false teachers that cannot cease from sin. Why would Peter be a sinner if he's telling everybody to stop sinning? That would be a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites. When was the last time We're you all said? hypocrites? When was the last time you said? Bro, no, no, stop, stop, stop. You don't want to answer my question. Are you this God? Is this is Are thing. you God? Maybe you're a hypocrite. Am I? How am I hypocritical? Because you've been saying two different things the whole time you've been here. Things. One, you, you one said. We, yeah. Okay, we're all but, hypocrites. But what, 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 what have I said right now that's hypocritical? That we're all I, hypocrites. We're all hypocrites. Yeah. yeah you cannot are. even know that yeah. unless you're God. Because, hey, this You is said why. you're a hypocrite. This is why. And I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you right here. Hey, hey guys, how y'all doing? You all right? Hey, so I walk around every day, right? I walk around this campus and I pre or, and I believe that I should refrain from sexual immortality. But I struggle with lust. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 19 year old guy. I what do you mean you struggle with lust? Things. What does that I mean? Somebody and I have maybe have thoughts in my mind that aren't right. Because do you have sex women. outside of marriage? Yes or no? no? I don't. So you lust, but you lust after women. It's part, it's in the, it's part of my mind, a part of my struggle. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay, yeah. So we're supposed so to have the mind perfect? of Christ. Jesus said, "Be ye perfect, even as your heavenly whoa, whoa, Father where, where, is perfect." Uh, script, uh, okay. Chapter and verse. Let's, let's um, be, be, yep. be perfect. Be perfect. Show me where it says that, and then show me where you have to be perfect in order to be saved. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father, your Father which is in heaven, is perfect. So let's now, what is question. biblical perfection? Okay, biblical perfection is something we'll never reach. It's something we're supposed to continue. Says who? After. God says that over time and time again. Show you know me. This. You know this. Show me in hey, Scripture. This thing. You don't want to answer my. Question. You don't want to. You don't want to go to the Bible. All you have is a bunch of opinions that aren't biblical, and I'm showing I'm you have Scripture. A conversation with these people. That's what I, I thought. I love you. I'll see you. We'll be together. He's a false Christian. No, we won't, bro. You're like Matthew 7. Let me tell you what this guy is like right here. Matthew 7. Yeah, yeah, Carl Lentz, exactly. Matthew 7, verse 21. You weren't in our conversation, man. Matthew 7, verse 21 for this young man here. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Actually, I'll back up. Check this out. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. You can't be a believer and still a sinner at the same time. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. That's how you can tell between That's how you can between between a real Christian and a fake Christian. Verse 21 says right here, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, I believe in you, Lord. I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sunday. Not everyone that says that to the Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Is it the will of my Father in heaven that you should keep being a sinner? No. So if you're still a sinner, you're not doing the will of your Father, therefore you're deceived. What is the will of your Father in heaven? To believe on him whom he has sent. Is that his will? Yes. Or is his will to bring heaven on earth? What do you mean? Do you bring mean? heaven on earth. We can't bring heaven on earth. God does that that's by the Holy Spirit. That's what the whole end of the, the Bible, the whole end of chapter of the Bible. God does that. We don't do that. God does that. But in order to, for him to be able to do that, you would have to believe him. You have to be, repent from you your sins. You have to believe in him and you have to Repent of your favor. sin. Repent of your Correct. sin. What's favor? You don't know about God's favor? What do you know about God's favor? What's God's favor? What is God's favor? What is his will? I'm asking you. You said it. I already did. I just did. None should perish, that you don't walk in sin, that you believe on him whom he has sent. And what was the last one? That you believe on him whom he has sent, Jesus Christ. So are these just based off of scriptures? Or do you yes, well? based on scripture. What's What's church? Do you know what the church is, young lady? Do you know what the church is? From the Bible, yeah. Do you know what the Bible I'm not a young man. I'm a grown man. Are you a man? Yes, but I'm not a young man. You're not old. Uh, I'm middle-aged, but I'm old compared to you. I'm old compared to you. You don't address me as young man. I'm not a young, I'm not younger than you. Oh, okay, so, so you have a Jezebel spirit then. 
I'm a Jezebel. So you want to usurp authority over me as a woman, a woman who likes to disrespect men and usurp authority Are over men. Are you God? Doesn't God? matter. It does matter. The Bible says Respect that earned, the Bible it. says that women should not usurp authority over men. So not only and not disrespect are you men. to be Christian, you're a misogynist as well. Oh, misogynist, okay. really? Says the one who comes up here and calls me young man. You just call me young woman. Well, you are a young lady, are you not? No, I, I, I even identify as a woman. Doesn't matter. What if I don't? Doesn't matter. You're a lady. That's what, your, that's what your blood says. Am I a lady? You're what, a woman. What part of my body proves to you that I'm You're a woman. woman. Your blood. Have you seen my vagina? Your blood. Your blood. Do you know I have women Your blood. What if I had a dick? Your blood. What if I had a dick? You're a filthy woman. I am. Yeah. I'm filthy. Yeah, you're not a Christian. You're going to come over here and lecture me about biblical faith? You're gonna you don't have God's favor on you. About biblical faith? That's right. When you, you have drunkards, homosexuals, fornicators, hypocrites, Muslims, you're they're a all, hypocrite. They're all going to hell. You're a hypocrite. According to, to the hell. sinner. You're going to Says who, you? According to the sinner. Yeah, no. According to I'm you. not a sinner. You think I'm a sinner, but... but you are. Out of your mouth. You out of your out mouth. Out of my mouth, I'm a sinner? Out of your mouth, out yes. Out of your mouth, you're a sinner. You've you're revealed judging. your heart. You're, you're revealing your heart because you're, you're a judger. What do you mean a judger? Is that a sin? Yes. Show me the sin. show me the scripture. Give me your, give me your Bible. No, you look it up on your phone. Look it up on my phone? Show me the scripture that says judging is a sin. Show me the scripture that says me talking out of my mouth is a sin. Oh, I can show you that. Please, please. Out of your mouth comes all kind of... What is that? matter of fact, my mother who's an elder. Let, let me. Your mother's an elder? My mother is That's unbiblical. I know it's biblical. No, it's not. It is. Females are not supposed to be elders in the church, according to the Bible. So no wonder you're like that. No wonder. No wonder you have a Jezebel spirit. No wonder I'm like that? Yeah. Because that's unbiblical. Your mom can call herself an elder all she wants, or a pastor, or whatever, but it's not according to the Bible. But she was she was appointed by a male pastor. It doesn't matter. It He's doesn't. deceived. It's, it's deceived. not biblical. It's not biblical. Yeah. Oh, it's my it's my timer. Said, said you are not an elder because you're a woman. That's right. He told he called me a Jezebel. According to the Bible, I said you have a Jezebel spirit. You are. Why don't you tell your mama what you said? There you go. No, you said some other things about your body parts too. You said some other things about your body parts. I use male male authority because he has authority over me. I didn't say that. Then why would I need Now to you're lying to your mama. That's a sin. You? Well, you're lying. Why are you usurping your authority if you don't have, if you don't have authority? You're out here cursing at men. Right. You're out here trying to but teach me the Bible. Your you're trying to teach me the Bible, which is unbiblical. Unbiblical. I'm not trying to usurp. Hold on. I'm not usurping authority over you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're, what you're doing is unbiblical according to the word of God. Take it or leave it. And you got a filthy mouth. You're talking about your sexual body parts. My sexual body part? Yep. My anatomy is sexual? No, I'm saying you are talking about those things. No, that's not what you said. It is. That's not what you said. No. Don't lie to your mom. That's right. That's filthy. You don't talk about things like that. It's a body part. You don't talk about things like that. It's a body part. We're living in the Sure, you're free to say it, but it's not right. Sure she can, it's but it's not right. It's right or it's back or this is how Jesus it's, acts? Actually, he does. This is, not, this is not Jesus. You have no this authority to lecture about this Jesus. Is not God. Look at you. This is not God. Look at you. 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 Look at what you represent. None of this represents God. Oh, and you represent God. Talking about this and that, right? Standing out here with, 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 with posters. Why don't you just repent? Repent. Believe the gospel of Christ. Believe it. How the fuck do you expect Believe it. Believe you're, you're lost. You Turn, to Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. And you're judging me, hypocrite. No, I, I'm Turn to Jesus. I'm no, I'm not. Because of what's coming out of your mouth. No, it's not. I'm telling you to repent. And you're angry. You're angry. I repent to him. I don't repent to you. It doesn't matter. You don't have to repent to me. I never said repent to me. You got to follow the Lord's Bible. Right. Follow the Lord. And you're not doing that because you have a Jezebel how, spirit. How are you out here following the Lord's Bible? Because I'm telling you a sinner to repent. You're a sinner yourself. No, I'm not. You are. No. Nope. Jesus has saved me and cleansed me. I'm no longer a sinner because of his blood. These aren't his children. No, they're not. These are all his kids. No, they're not. Everybody's no, everybody's, everybody's God's creation. No. Nope. That doesn't life. mean they're children. Jesus says you're of your father, the devil. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 8 to people like you who said they believe in Jesus and walk as sinners. In John chapter 8, Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil. 
So there's children of the devil well, and there's the children mouth. of God. I'm talking about you. Right, me. What's you coming out of your mouth right now? We're having conversation. You're a child of the devil. No, I'm not saying that. You're saying that. We're having a conversation. So me, I'm a child of the devil is what you're saying. Because of what's coming out of your mouth. Because of how I'm presenting myself. What's coming out of your mouth. Can I say the same back to you, that you are presenting yourself to me as a child of the devil? You can say what you want. I'm telling you from the Bible. The things that are coming out of your mouth reveal. Your mouth are filthy. Show me. Show me. Show me. They're not of him. God does not say judge your peers. Jesus said judge righteous judgment. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said judge. Judge righteous judgment. And it's righteous to judge you. you for you to judge. Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit, right? A, a good tree cannot but produce bad fruit. But as Jesus said that you are allowed, you, this person, this man, and this body, that you Why are, are you? allowed to sure. judge other people. Sure. He said, the, the, Paul, Paul wrote, you he know what Paul him. wrote? I said he said, Jesus. a I, spiritual man. Oh, you don't, Paul. Paul. you don't listen to Paul? You don't listen to Paul? You don't listen to Paul? Look at you. When he gave Jezebel spirit right now. He did not say judge other people. And you're judging me. Why do you say don't judge other people when you're judging me? Why do you say that? don't judge other people when you're sitting here judging me, calling me a Jezebel. I didn't say don't judge other people. Whoa, see that? This is a child of the devil. This is the problem with American Christianity right here. Fake believers like her are lost. We're not trying to save anybody, ma'am. We're trying to preach the gospel. And while you're judging, you're of your father, the devil, and of your father's works you will do. He was a liar from the beginning and a murderer. And you hate God. You hate God. Jesus did in John chapter 8. Because I'm exposing her. Wow, listen to your filthy mouth. Why are all these women having filthy mouths? Why do women, why do women in this day and age have filthy mouths? Hasn't anybody taught you how to be a young woman of God? You have a filthy mouth. Why don't you go wash your mouth out with soap? See that? Filthy mouth. Filthy mouth. More filthy mouths. Don't you understand you need Christ? You're angry because you hate the truth. We're here to tell you I'm not angry at anybody. No, I'm not. Uh, let me talk to her first. Yeah. Actually, it's a her. Her. Uh, what does your blood say? What does your blood say? You're a male or a female? Okay, so you're either a male or a female. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 19 that he created them male and female. Male and female. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus said he created us male. And it doesn't matter if you're Christian or not. He's not talking about Christians. In Matthew 19, he's saying that he created them male and female. God is binary. There's no other genders. You hate yourself if you don't receive what you have been born in. You actually hate yourself. You don't love yourself. If you were born a man and you think you're a woman, you hate yourself and what God created you to be. What does your blood say? What does your blood say? Okay, so that's right. Whatever your blood says, that's what God created you to be and you need to be that. No, it's not 3%. And they, okay, look at their blood. Look at their blood. What do you mean? The people with titties and a dick? Okay, so do you know anybody that's that's uh, born with both? You do? Your roommate has both both parts. Okay, what does she, what does her blood say? Do you know? Okay, is that, is that, for someone to be like that, is that a genetic mutation or is that the normal thing? Tell me. Okay, so, so, so a genetic mutation is not what God created them to be. Oh, okay, so I get it. That, 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 that goes without saying, young man. Every everybody knows that that's science. You don't have to state it. It's like it's like Captain Obvious. It's science, right? No, he didn't make a mistake. You see, the gene pool gets corrupted every generation, and so there's genetic mutations. There's diseases passed on because of the fall of man. Excuse me. Because of a genetic mutation. God didn't create him to be that way. He, he's he's going he's gonna to have one dominating sex. Okay, that is not the normal. God created... 
This is what Jesus. This is what Jesus said. I'm gonna give you what Jesus said in Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Oh, she walked away. Okay. Yeah, what's up, man? So, I'm a Christian, right? So, I mean, of course, we all have our own opinions. And you know, Well, we got to go to the Bible. If you're a Christian, you believe this is the Word of God, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I do. Um, but what, you know, okay, so coming from a college student, what makes you guys think that these um, immature college students are going to listen? You'd be surprised. Yelling. Um, You'd be surprised. I know, but um, I just... I've had method. people from Kennesaw State actually give their life to the Lord. Yeah, and that's good, but if I've you seen look, it. look at the majority of how many people are actually like get angry from okay. the, the method of, you know. What did Jesus say about the narrow way? He said, few find it, but broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in there at. So most people are going to reject the true message of the gospel. See, it's not our jobs as Christians to water down the gospel so much that everybody just loves you and loves Jesus because it's false. If people are getting offended at the truth, then they have a problem with the truth. We're, we're commanded to tell the truth, regardless of how people feel about it, right? I mean, it's God's hope that everybody gets saved, and that's my hope, but it's not my job to say, it's okay, homosexual, you're going to be okay. You're going to enter the kingdom of God. It's okay if you keep sinning your whole life. It's going to be okay. That's not what the Bible teaches. I understand that. Yeah. And, and I, 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 do, I, I do understand that. Um, but jumping straight to the you're going to hell persona is, is going to make people... Well, if I tell everybody that God loves them, they're all going to agree with that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a great person. Why wouldn't God love me? Everybody knows that God loves them. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's it's a fake love, of course, but everybody if I sit out here and say God loves you God loves you God loves you we got to determine we got to determine who we're talking to here So if I tell somebody that God loves them in their sin I'm actually doing them harm you see because now they're feeling better about their sin and that God loves me anyway Even though I'm this way. It's not true because God's love God has a benevolent love for all mankind in that he wants them to be saved But as they hold on to their sin they're enemies of God right and God's wrath is upon them but Jesus's love came he came so that they could come out from under the wrath of God and be in the love of God for this is love right Jesus said if you love me obey my commandments right according to the new covenant right which is which is the righteousness of the law not all the 600 plus laws but I'm talking about what Jesus preached in the New Testament and so if somebody calls himself a sinner as a believer they're deceived because nowhere in the Bible does it call the believers sinners if you're walking in sin Jesus says, you shall know them by their fruit. You're not a believer. You're not a born-again believer, so according to the Bible. So if a Christian sins, which a lot do, uh, I fall sometimes. Okay. Uh, even though uh, I, I will call myself saved, I've been baptized. And, uh, yeah, I hear you. You know, I, we, so we all still sin. I'm, I'm glad you say if a Christian sins, because that's the very word to use. It's not when a Christian sins. The Bible says in 1 John, if, right? That means it's a possibility. It's not a definite. It says, yes. If, 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 please. I've had enough of you. Please, stop. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. You're, okay, good. Go over there. Go over there. That's, you're proving your Jezebel spirit right now. Okay, so back to you. So back to you. Um, sorry, they lost my train of thought. You said, you said what? Yeah, if. The Bible says, if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. The man cries Jesus. The Bible doesn't say it's going to happen. In fact, the Bible never says, Jesus commands us. He said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. You see, this is the problem in America, right? Everybody thinks that they're going to continue in sin. It's the problem. American Christians. Like, filthy, filthy mouth women like that and that Whoa. this is the problem right no it's not according to what scripture are you judging me right hold on hold on let's let's not be a hypocrite are you judging me are you take care man i'm sorry man it's they're, they're just too loud are you judging me right now are you judging me right now oh you're not is what i'm doing wrong okay so i'm gonna keep preaching According to who? No. If if the truth scares him, you see, 
Could you see this? Look like this? This is not the truth. The way the God does no. not like. Oh, really? Really? This is not how so, he so being a sinner all the time and doing whatever I want, even though it's a, a sin, sinner? is a Christian. I'm not a sinner. You're not Jesus. I'm not a sinner. You don't have to be Jesus to not be a sinner. Okay, so are you judging me? No. You just judged me as being not perfect. That's a fact. Oh, oh, but I thought we couldn't judge. Show me in the Bible that nobody's perfect. Okay, Jesus said, Jesus, and he lives in me. He lives in me. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does. does. You're judging me and you're judging me. And those that follow him. Yep. The Bible says, I don't have a problem with judgment. Hold on, let me get this clear, y'all, so you don't act ignorant anymore. I don't have a problem with judgment. But here's the hypocrisy with all y'all. You say, you, I'm, I'm going to expose your ignorance right now. Listen, when you say that, oh, you can't judge, but yet you judge me, you are a hypocrite. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself. Listen, I'm going to repeat myself. I don't have a problem with judging, young lady. I don't have a problem with judging, young lady. I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with judging. According to you, are you a sinner? Are you a sinner? Okay, then I don't listen to you about the gospel. No, no. Listen. No. Nope. I'm going to tell you in Romans 6 where you're wrong. Yeah, okay, but yeah, you're a sinner. No. No, I'm not. You're judging me. You're judging me. You're calling me a sinner when I'm not. Nope. Look at this. This is what Paul said. No. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That great? You don't want to hear the Bible? Here we go. Here we go. You have been sinning? What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not? Why are you being rude? Why are you being rude? I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? If you're a sinner, you're not born again. If anybody has any genuine questions, come talk to me. Come talk to me. Okay. You, listen, tell your friend there that if I'm going to answer your question, I want to answer your question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, everybody, no, we're not. Hold on. Listen, 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 listen. Are you going to be quiet for a second? Are you going to listen? I'm not going to listen until you listen. But you're not listening. Okay, well, then I'll go over here. Look at all these followers of mine. Come on. Come on. Look at you. Look at you. Why are you guys following me? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. How you doing? Good to see you. I remember you. It's good to see you. No, I'm not having a debate with you. Why? Because you're ignorant. You have a question? Okay, hold on. Before I answer your question, right? Make sure you tell all your friends here to listen. I'll listen to her question. Okay, okay if, if they start over talking me, I'm not going to be able to answer your question. Okay? See, like that? If that happens, if that happens, I'm going to stop. Okay? Just so you know. No, I'm not going to listen. No. No. Didn't say that. So you've sinned before? I didn't say I'd never sinned. I said, as a born-again believer, you don't walk in sin, therefore you're not a sinner. So you haven't sinned since you repented? I didn't say that either. What the hell are you saying then? I'm telling you what the Bible teaches. The Bible doesn't teach that we're going to continue in sin. It doesn't teach that. Okay, so do you sin? Yes or no? No, I don't continue in sin, no. You're literally wearing mixed fabrics. That's not a sin. That's absolutely a sin. It's in your damn book. No. You don't oh understand the okay. old covenant. Okay. Listen to this ignorant one. Romans 3:23 okay. says, "For all have sinned and fall short of the Okay. What's the what's the what's the tent? You speak English, right? You speak English. All have sinned. You've sinned before. Bass tent. Okay. So you don't want to listen. Look at you. Look at you. Ignorance. Ignorance of the word of God. All have sinned. Yet you're cursing like a filthy mouthed woman. You calling me a hypocrite? All you women that curse and have filthy mouths have no place. 
No place to come and correct me on the Bible. No place. Horrible things? Like what? See, look at that. Ignorance. 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 I don't know. You know what? You're wrong. Leviticus 19:19. You shall keep my status. You shall not let your cattle breed with a different kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed. You shall not wear two garments made of two types of material. Okay. Does that apply to us in the new covenant? Yes or no? Yes. In Christ. Show me the scripture that that applies to us I now. I literally just did. Okay, but you read the old covenant. Jesus is the new covenant. Therefore, we are not required. We're not required to keep the dietary laws. Oh, so some of the laws can be thrown out, but some of them keep? According to Jesus, yes. He fulfilled some of them. Oh my God, that's so cherry picking it hurts. It's not. Then tell Jared, Jesus, he cherry picked that. Yeah, see? You're Wicked. You're a filthy mouth woman, just like the rest of those that are cursing. Another one. Filthy mouth. Filthy mouth. Go wash your soap mouth with soap. Filthy mouth. Sure can. You're still a filthy mouth. That's fine. That's fine. You can, but you're still a filthy mouth woman. Because she has a filthy mouth. Her dad must not have whooped her. Your dad must not have spanked you. Spanked you. Spanked you. Am I supposed to be scared? I'm shaking in my boots. Am I supposed to be scared of a filthy mouth little girl? You are no better. No, spank you. Spanking is not abuse. That's the problem. That's the problem. You don't. You don't respect anybody. That's what I said. Filthy mouth. Stop calling her that. All right, listen, listen. If you're gonna talk to me and listen and dialogue, I'm not gonna listen to filthy mouths. Okay? I'm talking to you. You're not cursing. I'm not listening to you either. Okay. Now, now, hold on. I'm gonna give you the guidelines. I'm gonna give you the guidelines if you want to talk to me. One, we're gonna talk back and forth respectfully. Two, you're not gonna curse. Okay. Okay, good. Three, if somebody else starts yelling to me while we're talking, conversation's over. But that doesn't apply to her. We can't have a proper dialogue. You just have to ignore them. See, she's doing it right now. What I want to know is, because I already love her, and I okay. am, I know, I don't know the Bible fully all the way. I'm still learning because I am a newly developed, developed Christian. Okay. But I've always had a relationship with God since I was a child. Always. Everybody always says that. I know that just because the Lord knows. Well, you don't have to know you, that. Well, this is what Jesus said, okay? What, no, you shall know them by their fruit. Question first. I have never read in the Bible that Jesus has went to the people who were doing wrong and did this. Okay. John chapter 8. Now, obviously, they didn't have signs back then. But we preach the gospel with whatever we have. I know that they preach the gospel, but they did not deliver the gospel as if it's Let me show you what Jesus said, right? I'm going to quote scripture. In the second half of John 8, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Okay? So these aren't the Pharisees. These are regular, ordinary Jews that believe, say they believe on Jesus. He said, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. That means if you obey what I'm saying, then you're truly my disciples. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from what? Free from sin? Free from death? Free from hell? They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Right? So they're trying to justify themselves. Like, man, we're children of Abraham. I've been a Christian since my daddy's a pastor. I go to church every Sunday. That's the modern, right? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth, Sin is the servant of sin. So when you call yourself a sinner and you say we're going to sin every day, you're a servant of sin. You're not a follower of Jesus. That's what he's saying. Now, hold on, hold on. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I'm free indeed because of what Jesus did in my life and that the Holy Spirit dwells in me. He's made me free from sin. Okay? And, 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 and he can for you too. I know, look, look, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Why? Because my word had no place in you. Why does everybody seek to destroy the world? I've been assaulted, knocked out. I've, been, I've had my equipment burned. I've had all, see, see? Maybe it's because you're See, see? Okay, so 
because you don't have his word in you. That's why you seek to kill me, Jesus said. He said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen of your father. Now, who's, who's he talking about? He's talking to these people that said they believed in him, but yet sees their works and saying, you're doing what you're doing of your father. Who's their father? He says it here. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth. Why are you looking at me, bro? Which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. He said it again. You people that believe in me, say you believe in me, are doing the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now they're saying that God is our father. Then Jesus said, if God, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came out of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. So what I'm going to say is that that is true. And, and he true. called him to repentance. But at the same time, you can't tell these people who may not know Christ about how they're going to hell and how they're doing this. How do you know But that? here's the thing. That's not your place. Everybody has said they believe in God. I understand so, that. You may say that not, maybe not you. I haven't heard from you. But at the same time, but you're they say to it. Bring them in to no, 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 no. No, not Christ. true, not true. You, it's not my job to bring them in. It's but God's it's job. It's your job to preach the, word, the truth. But you're not That's what I'm doing. It in a good way. According to you, though. No, but it's just according to just reality. That's not how okay, you Okay, but it. that's your opinion. It may be my you opinion, see? but it's everybody's opinion. It doesn't matter. Me as a Christian Wh woman, I me as a Christian man, believe. I believe the word of God. Is a narcissist and you're very, you're just now you're falsely accusing me. Now you're falsely accusing me. You're not a Christian woman if you're falsely accusing. Then if you're a sister, if you're my sister, I'm judging by what comes out of your mouth. Okay, well, here, here we go. Matthew 7. Let me give you, I'm not even prophesying. See, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to preach the word to you right now. This is what Jesus said to people like you. Okay, and you're a false believer. According to Jesus. What's up? I'd like to ask why that's the authoritative figure. Why are you using it at his, at his definitive truth when it's a book written by men for men? Why do you go to school and listen to textbooks that are written by men? Uh, well, they're a lot more recent than that. Oh, so, 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 so the fact that it's thousands of years old makes it non-authoritative? Is that your opinion? Is that your logic? To be hidden there, but I think that you're using it a bit more of a beating stick as opposed to a guide. According to who? A per, do you believe in God? No. Okay, so so a person who doesn't believe in God. I think your God's too small. You're trying to describe the Alpha and the Omega in a little 66 book. And what do you believe? It's not a little 66 book. Kindness is the ruler. Oh, kindness. And what is kindness to you? Accepting everybody for who they are? Yes. Being yes. With oh. Well, God doesn't do that. So Why? I guess God's not kind. Wait, if, that, if that's your God, you've answered Wait, my question. All right. Well, you don't love my God. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So I God doesn't accept everybody. No, he doesn't. God literally Personally, I think. If they repent. Okay. And repent from their sin means to turn away from their sin. That's he will fine. forgive them. I, I still haven't waited. But if you question. die as a sinner, you're not going to the kingdom of God. Okay. Go ahead. So. Did Jesus himself appoint you in this way to explain to us in a in a negative way about how we need to repent our sins? Sure, he said. He appointed you yourself. Sure. Not in the Bible. I, I don't want. I don't want to talk about the Bible right now. This is Are you asking you. me if I heard a voice from heaven and said, "Hey, Adam"? I want you to go to this campus yes. and preach. The, yes. If I told you that, you wouldn't believe me. No, I want to know personally. I, I will believe anything you say. Just go ahead. No, you won't. It, did, did he really, no, you did you hear that voice? And it's he irrelevant. Said, Please come and hold this sign so that these kids can talk to you about their God and you dismiss them. Because we all have different relationships with God. No. And you are telling us that our relationship with God is wrong because it's not your relationship no, with God. No, it's the Bible's relationship. I know they'll clap. 
clap because she's tickling your ears. But the truth is... But you, but you are telling us that you don't want to be judged, but you are judging... No, no, I didn't she, say I don't want to be judged. No, I never once said that. But it's wrong to be judged, but you I never said that either. Them. Never said that either. You don't think it's wrong. I was pointing out your hypocrisy by saying... But you're being a hypocrite, too. Are you going to talk over me? Or are you going to let me respond? Okay. Okay. So, one, I never said it's wrong to judge, ever. Two, I never said I have a problem with y'all judging me, ever. What I am doing, and listen logically, y'all, please, try to listen. I know, I, know, I know you're still young, but this is really simple. When you guys come up to me and say, you can't judge, what you're doing is wrong, huh? When you do that, you're a hypocrite. Because here, listen, hear me out. Because now you're judging me and my methods when you're saying that it's wrong to judge. That's showing you that you're a hypocrite. Okay, it's my no, he did not. He said, actually, Jesus said, no, he didn't. That's what I'm doing. Okay. God did not say not to judge. He said, wait, we're having a conversation right here. He just said, he just said which judgment to judge with. I'm not I'm not listening to you. Because why? Because you're not of God. So I won't listen to any counsel you give me. Yes. I am confirmed. I am baptized. I have Are you a Catholic? Yes, I am. I used to be a Catholic. They're lost. Lost? Yeah. Motherfucker. Oh, oh look at that filthy God. mouth. That's what I thought. <laughs> More you filthy are, mouth. You are ignorant. You are Typical a Catholic. You're Typical Catholic. You're ignorant. You are a hypocrite. You are not a child of Wait, God. Wait, I thought judging you, was wrong. You are not a child of God. Why are you God? judging me? No, no, no. Judging's not wrong. Oh, you judging's not, not wrong all of a sudden. You're the one that said it. You're the one that fucking said it. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You're didn't say that. My God. My God. Filthy mouth. My God. Our God. Filthy mouth. No, you need you're to lost. Be saved. You need to be saved. No, you, you need really to be born do, again. Honey. I will pray for you. According to a okay? wicked, filthy mouth little girl, I need to be saved. I'm going to no. pray for you. No. I'm going to pray for you. No, I won't be. What? According to y'all's opinion? Oh, I thank you, Lord, that you're not like these people here. No, I'm done with you. All right. Let's go this way. I'm not done with you at all. I'm done with you. I don't care if you were done with me. I'm not done with you. I know. You're a Jezebel spirit. Thank you. That's what a Jezebel spirit does. Thank you. That's what a filthy spirit does. That's what a Jezebel spirit does. You're my follower right now. I should be. You're Jesus. You're All perfect. Right. You got a question, man? Right? You're perfect. Yeah. What, do you hate Jews and Muslims and all them? Why would I hate them? Because they're not Christians. But that doesn't mean I hate them. Do you just like them? Do you think they're going to hell? No. The truth is, is that if you don't believe in Christ Jesus, you're on the way to hell. By not believing in Christ Jesus, you're on the way to hell. Don't walk away! Yeah. So, it's love for me to tell a Muslim to repent and be born again. It's not hate. But so you think Muslims are going to go to hell, though, if they don't believe in Jesus as their Savior? Of course, anybody. Not just Muslim, but Jews, atheists, anybody. It's not just Muslims. Muslims and Jews all believe in him as No, well. they don't. Yes, they do. Okay, what does the Quran say about Jesus? That he is a disciple. No. Yes, I it have says, read it. Okay, does it say he's the son of God? No. That's the problem. Because that's what is written about Jesus, is that he's the son of God. But who wrote the Bible? His followers. John, not Jesus Peter. Word. So you can't take it as Jesus' word. Of course you can. It's it's been author it's been authorized by the ancient church fathers that followed the apostles and the apostles themselves. But it's Jesus that Jesus word. said it. Yes, they are. But how do you know they didn't change them? They didn't because we have ancient men. Even Muhammad had the Bible we have today. Yes. Yeah. He built off of that. No, well, yes and no. He twisted it because he took out. He says that he he wrote that Jesus didn't die on a cross. That he was replaced. That goes against secular history, my man. Even secular history says that Jesus Christ died on a cross. The Quran got that wrong. So I have to ask you, yeah. how do you know the Bible is right compared to the Quran? Oh, because it's not inconsistent. And because of the Old the Testament. every time it's been rewritten. Not true. It is true. Not true, my man. What, what, what are you looking into to prove that? Look at Roman Catholic, look at Greek Catholic, they all change. We're not talking about, there is a Bible translation that has not changed. 
King James Bible, New King James Bible. Those are coming from the Texas Receptus and the Masoretic Text. Even, even the Septuagint, because they line up with the ancient text. When you translate it, man, there's, there's, bro, we could go all day like this. Why don't you, why don't you go find that out? I already found that out. I'm telling you to go find that out, if you really care. Look at this fake believer right here. You're a fake believer. Oh yeah, so says the homosexual flag, I'm a right? Oh, I'm homosexual. Okay. No, I said, what's that flag? The flag for Biden. Okay, see. This is what you need. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Just don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. What are you gonna do? I'm not gonna do anything. Just respect my space. I don't have to respect shit. Yes, it's against the law to touch me. It's against the law. To put you, your hands you were on. done with me. Why are you talking to me? You dumb Well, I just don't want you to, you're angry, so I don't know what you're going to do. I touched your side. Can you stop? I touched your side. Seriously. Uh, grow up. Grow up. <laughs> this is the generation we have to deal with nowadays, right here. Man. Man. So how you doing? Good. <laughs> we're back out here for this fiasco again. How you been doing? What are you, a junior now? Sweet. It's good. How you, how, how you, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is, this is the way it is. I mean, when you preach the truth, you know, it's the way it is. Yeah. Better than I deserve. I had a, I had a newborn son nine months ago to add to my three girls. Praise God. Yeah. So God's been blessing us. <laughs> Praise God. But it's good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, our, our home fellowship. We go to it in uh, near Lagrange. Yeah, we're all part of a home fellowship. Can anybody just come? I mean, yeah, you can talk to him. He's the pastor. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's good to see you. <laughs> all right. Well, they have the wrong God. Why? What makes what makes you want to allow the same thing? Well, the same thing that lets them say it to me. The same thing that lets them say it to me. They, they, they don't think that you you have you, you have the wrong God. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. Have, have, have wait, you, wait, wait. Have a movie ever told you that? Of course, yes, many times. Of course they would, many or of course they Hundreds of times. So those aren't hundreds of times. Okay. I've been doing this for 20 years. So you know, the Muslim God is Allah, right? Allah but Allah, Allah means God. It just means God, one, right. Adonai, one. The only difference between Christians and Muslims is the Bible. Well, there's a lot of differences. So, so when it comes, I would like to hear that. Okay. I'm done with you. You can yeah. go in. I can tell you the difference. So, like, like in the Quran, it says Allah has no son. <laughs> Right. Okay. The Bible says God has a son, his name is Jesus. Right. And they believe in a guy named Isa, which is the translation of Jesus. Right. They believe in a Jesus, but the Jesus they believe in didn't die on the cross. Right. Right. They believe he's a he's a prophet. Messiah, not a the not, prophet. A, not a, 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 a uh, extension of God. Not the son of God, not God the flesh. Right, correct. Okay, so, How does that make them wrong? Right. <laughs> so, I mean, when it comes to, just to address the question real quick, when it comes to them being wrong or I being wrong, the point I'm making is we can't both be right. We believe opposite things. So, we believe opposite things. Either both of us are wrong or one of us is wrong. So, me telling them he's wrong, him telling me I'm wrong, does not prove anything. I'm just going to be telling you, you ask me why it's on the side, I'm telling you why. If you can't both be right, then why do you get to choose that he's the wrong one and not you? Well, I, I have the truth of God's word. And so That's what I'm basing it on. But they believe they have the same thing. So yeah, why they, they, they believe that they so have the Quran. Right? They the wrong ones and not you. Well, that's the same question you can ask them, too. They, they, they're, they're saying the same thing. They're, they're just as exclusive as I am exclusive. So, I have a question. Yeah. Jews are not on this list, but they believe in something different than Christians, too. So, when it comes to my, my list, this is not an exhaustive list. Okay. okay? It's, it's a very small list. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, a banner I can hold on to. It's big, it becomes a sail. It would blow me away. Okay. That's big enough I could list all the sins on it. But, for example, Jews, not all Jews believe the wrong thing. All the early Christians were Jews. All the disciples, Jews were Jews, right. All the disciples were Jews. So they came first to the Jews. And then they get the Gentiles later on, through Peter, through Paul. And so, I know Jews were saved. They followed Jesus. 
They follow, they follow Yeshua. Well, they don't follow Jesus. Oh, yeah. That you keep telling yourself that. They don't believe in a second coming. They don't believe in a second coming. Okay. Peter and Paul and John. Okay. Sure. So when I say Jew, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so there's people who have come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Tell them more lies. Tell them. Now they believe the New Testament. They'll believe a lie. Keep telling them. That logic, right? Where are you using that logic? Muslims are from the same area as Christians and Jews. They all come from the same place. Muslims are religion. See, Jew is not just religion. No. Jew, Islam Jew is, is the religion. Muslim is the person who believes in Islam. But Islam is the religion. Okay, but Muslim is someone who believes in Islam. A Jew is not someone who only believes in the Old Testament necessarily. They can believe in the Old Testament too. But this is not true. Yes, sir. There's actually a whole group called Jews for Jesus. Yeah, they're not Jews. They're Actually, they are Jews. Yeah, no. If you're okay, so speaking of the religious group, that's the Jesus was Jewish. Yeah, so it's, yeah he was, and then he died. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. So and he rose again. Jewish, who are from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. No, actually, it's not. Have you ever read the prophets, the Jewish prophets? Probably not. Because if you read Isaiah 53, then you... Yeah. Isaiah 53 says that the Jewish... Messiah would rise again and be killed. Actually, no, if you read the 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel, Messiah already came. Go read it. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. What city he'd be born in? How he would die? All right. Die beside? Where he'd be buried? Yeah, that's the buried in? You don't want to hear anything I got to say. You have kids? I have children. I don't have kids. You have a wife? Absolutely, 16 years. Okay, so, so if your child one day decides that uh, maybe they want to be a Catholic or they want to be gay, are you going to disown them as your child? I would exhort them in the truth like I'm doing to you. Exhort them in the truth. That's right. So, and they have a free will choice to choose whether they want. So they have their free will choice and they decide not to be exhorted in your truth. Then that's their, resp that's their responsibility for God. But you're not going to claim them as your child anymore? She would still be my daughter and I'd pray for her and tell her the truth. And plead with her to stop doing that. No, it's the Bible truth. No, we all have different truths. We all have different truths. No, yeah, you all have different truths. No, not you all. But the Bible is the truth. We all. We all. We all have different truths. I'm not listening to any of y'all when y'all three, four, five talking to me at once. We all have different relationships with God. And I personally do not think it is right for you to come in and force your relationship with God on us. Good for you. See, you're not even trying to have a conversation. Nope, not with you. Okay. And that makes you ignorant. Okay. And hypocr Good. And hip hypocrisy is what you guys are saying is wrong. But you're, you're a hypocrite. I'll pray for your children and your wife and you. God won't listen. God will listen. Not to you. He doesn't hear sinners like you. Sinners? Mm -hmm. So the Bible says God doesn't hear sinners. You know what confession is? It says, yeah, to a priest. Yeah, I used to be a Catholic. It's not getting you anywhere. Confession is repenting your sins. No, that's not biblical repentance. That's not what Jesus was talking about. You don't go into a room with a Catholic and say, Oh, Father, forgive me, I've, I've sinned. You don't pray to Mary. That's not in the Bible. Catholicism is just wrong. There's a lot. Have you ever read the Catholic Catechism at all? Yes. Okay, so the Hail Mary, right? What does it say at the end of that prayer? Hail Mary, grace, God is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is thy one Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. So you're asking Mary to pray pray for you but to God. Mary's the mother of Jesus. So, uh, He's, she's the earthly mother of Jesus. He's, she's not the mother of Jesus anymore. So she's, just not she's a child of God. In, in heaven, in the kingdom of God, she's not the mother of Jesus. She's redeemed by the blood of Jesus just like any other saint. In fact, Jesus even said, when Mary was coming to find him, he said, who's my mother and my brother? They that hear the word and follow me. Yeah. So I said all those times that God has washed away. He's cleansed me of it. And then he changed me. And now I live in Good, what is it? Get out of prison, man. I've been changed. Transformed. Good job. So your, your peer here has admitted to his sins. 
but you're perfect and you've never said never said that no he wouldn't <laughs> never said that never said i never sinned i'm not a sinner i'm not that either just a bible believing bible obeying born again but you have admitted to your past excuse me he has not done that well, no, he's. I, I know his brother really well. I know I've known him. He's been believing four years now. I know what he believes, and he he, he knows he's sinned in the past. He's even he's even confessed certain sins to me. So I, he knows he's sinned. But, but I think that, that what he's trying to communicate to you is that the true Christian is going to live a life of victory. They're living above sin. They're living a holy life. He did not communicate that though. He hasn't said not one, one, one of those words. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe there was some misunderstanding. Maybe some, maybe some emotions. Maybe some emotions are flying. As well, but I know what he believes. So wh whether it was effectively communicated or effectively heard or not, I don't know. But I know he believes. The there was no way to in fact, in fact, I'm his pastor. Because he was you're his pastor. Yeah. Okay, so we're not even going to talk to him. We want to talk to you. Okay, well, he's, he's good too. I mean, he's, so I have a question. He's, he's a really solid apologist. He loves Jesus. So you Jesus. preach the word? Literally, huh? you preach the word to him. Just this past Sunday, I preached the word to him. But he said he didn't go. To the, he doesn't go to church. So well, wait, never said that. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. She's lying again. So, okay. young lady, just just so you understand the word church. The word church is not. She's lying. How am I lying? So he doesn't go. He's a part of the church. I didn't said I don't go to church. He's a part of the body of Christ. So we are both we we are in church together. Sure, but we don't go. Like no. making shit up. No. That's probably Stop semantic. Cursing. Okay. Okay. Don't tell me what okay. to do. So if, Stop are cursing. Are you my dad? Maybe. I don't know. Are you I my dad? Maybe your dad needs to tell you that. I but not can you, bitch. See? I have a Bible for you right here. I like that. Right here. Okay, so maybe what he means by that is not going to a building that's called the church. But he does think it's preaching. Where's my stones? They think that the that Oh, I don't have any. Oh, my God. That was good. Breathing people of God. You really got me. The people who are actually really set apart. Why don't you read what he told the adulterous woman after he yeah, forgave her? Read that. Okay, so read it. Part of the actual church. Okay. Yeah, all read it. Fellowship. You read it. I already know it. The fellowship of believers. And he pretended. And you know for sure that. And and sinners always like to say, "Oh, it's verbal stones." No, it's not. For sure, I can, I can, I can read Greek. Yes, I'm free of sin. I'm free of sin. Yes. And if someone ever has a question about a specific about situation. Yeah. Person, well, what? That wasn't translated properly. Absolutely. Back to the Hebrew, I know. Back to the Greek, Good. But Good. I'm not walking. Okay. Okay. Let me help y'all understand this concept. Okay. Let me help you understand this concept. In the past, I have sinned. Currently, I'm not sinning because of what Jesus did. In Christ, yes. I'm not listening to a sinner like you. Take your time, you can 
What do you mean? Like what church? Day, dude. <laughs> I mean, there's only one church, according to the Bible. It's the body of Christ. We're not part of an organization. So I would argue that there's many different churches in the world. What? We're not part of an organization. I just said that. So like, who is your friends? Yeah, it's my brothers in Christ. But like, well, some of us live in Lagrange. Some of us live in Franklin. Okay. Yeah. How do you like find each other? Because we're brothers. We we preach the gospel together. Brothers in Christ. Like, where do y'all meet for church? Uh, we, we meet in a home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a house party? Where's the Craig Park Club from? Okay, so just, you know, like, just for church, you just meet at home? Well, for fellowship, yeah. Okay, okay. I don't really call that church. I mean, okay. I know the religious term, but okay. the church in the Bible is the body of Christ. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But we meet for fellowship and worshiping the Lord and hearing the preaching of God's word. Yeah. Are y'all certainly yeah. denomination or anything? No. no just We're just believers. Okay. Yeah. We're not non-denominational either, because that's actually a denomination in and of itself. We're just okay. we don't really believe in that. Solidarity of me shaking. So, like, what's the basis of what you? Okay. Well, I know. I don't know if you remember me. I talked to you last time and like about a year ago okay. and it was a very interesting conversation and I came I'm glad to I had an impact <laughs> a negative one but it's okay it's all right it was an impact all right yeah. um, but basically I can't give you scripture what scripture I don't remember what it was Oh, I, I do remember what it is. That's not my point. So I came to you with Bible verses, and you came to me with Bible verses, and we had an interesting dialogue just talking about how your interpretation of what it meant and like what, what I thought it meant. Like what? I don't, I don't remember. No, it's okay. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that after that conversation, I went back home, and I really did my research, and it was very helpful. It made me more confident in what I believe. Okay. Um, like, what, what do you believe? I know that from last time, my friend Sam and I, we came over, and you said that basically once you're saved, you don't sin anymore. Okay, is that can, can you show me scripture that says that you will absolutely sin? No, no, is that what you said though? Is that what you believe? What I believe is this. Okay. Once you're born again, you've been washed completely from your sin, according to 1 Corinthians 6. Okay. You've been cleansed, justified, meaning all the crimes against you that you've committed from that time past have been have been washed away. Okay. Right? And you've been sanctified, meaning set apart for the master's use. Okay. Completely sin free at that moment okay. because of the blood of Jesus. That right. point on, you're given the Holy Spirit. Right. And the Bible says that if you abide in Him, if you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit, you will not sin. But that's what the scripture says. You don't believe that, Keep do you? Going. The possibility is there that you. Where are you going with all this? I mean, are, you're not finishing your sentence. The possibility is there that you could sin. That's why John, he says, if you sin, not when you sin. If you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. So you could still sin, but you don't have to. There is a possibility that you could. So what happens if you did? Not like you're I just gave you the scripture. No, no, no. But like if you... If, that's right. If you sin, And you're not like trying to live in sin, okay? You're doing, you're trying to follow Jesus. But like say like you're just rude to somebody. That's sin, right? Not necessarily. It depends on, depends on what God says. If the Holy Spirit convicts you because that's what the job of the Spirit is to do. Yes, what Jesus literally. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus literally said that the Holy Spirit has come to convict of sin. Right. So it's the Spirit's job to convict us, even as believers, if we've sinned. Right. So rude can be an interpretation of opinion, but sometimes it can be like a hard word, but it's done in love because you want that person. Because in Jude it says, "Of some save." with compassion, making a difference, and an other saved by fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That's what it says in Jude. So, so you could sin, but you don't have to sin. It's not a definite that you're going to sin. So you don't sin? What do you mean I don't sin? Like, do you, you don't sin. Am I going to sin in the future? Yeah. I don't know. You have... Exactly. That's a good, good. But do you sin? Do I sin now? I don't sin now. Did you sin yesterday? 
I don't think I did, no. What would happen if you did? That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant? You understand that about the shellfish, right? That's You're the old covenant, right? Piece of cloth. You see? I'm not talking about You're, that right now. Right. I'm talking about, did you sin yesterday? yesterday? Okay, yesterday. let me tell you what, what if hold on, you hold on, hold on. What you're doing is basing your belief and doctrine on man's experience instead of what the Bible promises, okay? The Bible promises freedom from sin. You didn't answer my question. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm answering it with scripture and what the Bible promises. Whether I sin or not has no weight on what the Bible says. You understand? Okay. What do you base your belief system on? Okay, so whether a man sins or not, it's not going to change your belief, right? Okay, I'm not saying I sinned yesterday. I'm not saying I didn't sin yesterday. I'm trying to get your foundation right. So just because everybody in the world sins every day, if they do, I don't know, I'm not God doesn't mean that the Bible doesn't say what it says. You have to base your doctrine on and belief system on the promises and what the scripture says. So, so no, it says pray. Don't pray publicly. What the fuck you think you're doing? An act of God and service of God is considered prayer. Check a Bible sometime. Okay. So ignorant, man. People are so pride in what they think is knowledge, but yet they're so wrong. Go ahead. Oh my God, are you I'm trying to have a good conversation with her. More, more ignorance. Go ahead. I'm just trying to be respectful and hear you So I want to, I want to ask you something now. Show me what do you believe? Okay. So basically, creation happened, right? Don't interrupt. Creation happened, right? God created the earth. Give me scripture for your opinion. Just, just before you go on, give me scripture. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? That's right. We got the first thing done. Ready? And that's what happened first. Okay. And I know last time I talked to you, you said that the fall didn't happen with Adam and Eve. What do you mean? Last time I talked to you, you said the fall did not begin with Adam and Eve. Do you I still don't, believe that? I never said that. Because <laughs> yes, when Adam and no, yes, I wouldn't. Yes, you're you're going to have to. He said that to me last time. Yes, you did. No. Yes, you did. No. I don't forget those. Do you know what the fall is? Sin. That's right. So Adam and Eve sinned. Yes, and that's what began They the were fall. created perfect, and right. they chose out of their own free will right. to sin. Right, which began, sin entered the world. But <laughs> it entered the world because they were the first ones to sin. That doesn't mean it passes on to the next generation. Because the next generation has the same free will as Adam and Eve do, to sin or not to sin. Sin doesn't travel through the DNA. It's abstract. So sin is not inherent? No. You're not born a sinner. The Bible doesn't teach that. Or else babies would go to hell when they die because there's no sinners in the kingdom of God. Babies don't go to hell according to Samuel, according to Jesus, when he said, for such is the kingdom of heaven. So if we're not inherently sinful, then why would we need a savior? Because you chose out of your own free will to sin. You see, you're the criminal, not your sinful nature or so-called sinful nature. That's, 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 that's the thing that people don't understand, that we chose to sin and go against the conscience that God gave us. Because God gave everyone a conscience to know what's right and wrong inherently. That's what he did give us, according to Romans. And, and we chose to disobey that and sin before God. That's and, and, and a sinful nature in Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians, if you look it up in the Greek, it, it, it's like this. It's like you've been practicing sin for so long, it becomes like a second nature. Like a basketball player shooting hoops, 3,000 shots. It's like a second nature. Not that they were born with it, but because they practice it so much, it's like that's what they do. That's their second nature. But even then, I can get around people believing in sinful nature. I can get around that as long as they believe that once they are born again, they have divine nature, okay. which is what Peter talks about. And so if you're born again, then that means you don't sin anymore. It means you could sin, but now you have power to overcome sin. Okay, but what would happen if you did sin? Then you have an advocate with the Father, like John says in his letter. It says if, he says if you sin. That means it's not a definite. It's an if, it's a possibility in First John. If you sin, we haven't. So basically John's saying, look, if you sin, you better repent. 
Because if you die in that sin, you're going to hell. You don't want to die in sin. That's why he's giving that exhortation. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to die in any sin. But God is long-suffering, of course. He goes after the one. Right? He, he goes after the one. But but look at what look at what his testimony. You know the, the parable where he goes after the one sheep. What does he say about the ninety-nine? They had no need of repentance. So he, they don't need to repent because they don't have any sin because Jesus cleansed them and they're walking in holiness. We're not out here promoting our own self-righteousness. We're promoting Christ and what He can do in a sinner's life. We're supposed to be sin-free. That's the whole point. We're supposed to be that. You know? Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I remember last time I talked to you, you, you specifically said that once you're saved, you don't sin anymore. And if you do, then it's like... Yeah, if you do. I didn't say it's impossible to, si to not sin. But, like, I never, you I never sin, believed that. you're born again, and yeah. if you... Like, say, like, say, like, because you believe you're born again, correct? Oh, for sure. Okay. There's so, so much means, evidence of that. that means <laughs> you don't you choose to sin ever. Right. Correct? Well, I could. And I have since I've been born again. But that's not what Scripture... That's because of my own free will choice. Right. Right? It's not impossible to sin. Right. Right? I could. And I've been tempted before, and I fall into that temptation, even as a believer. Okay. And if I would have died in that, like, I backslid for a year, and I got possessed with demons. In fact, when I came back to the Lord, the Lord actually cast demons out of me, like literal demons. I would feel them touching me. I'd see them. It, it was terrible. And that goes along with the scripture that it was a hundred times worse than what it was before because I, I went back into sexual sin. But um, that's irrelevant to what the Bible promises us. I did that out of my own free will, not because of some sin nature, and I got myself into trouble. Okay. Yeah. But people that people that say we're all sinners and I'm just going to keep sinning is that's not what the Bible says. Well, it doesn't say to keep sinning. No. And it doesn't say we're all sinners either. Show me the scripture. Show me the scripture. Wait, what do you mean? The scripture that says that the believers are sinners. Believers are yeah, sinners. Yeah, born like again, actively, born again believers sin. are sinners. When I say that you're a sinner, I don't mean that you're actively participating in sin. Well, God doesn't call me a sinner. He never. In fact. Look what God told Peter when he looked at the Gentiles as unclean in Acts. When the sheep came down three times, and he was like, no, I'm not going to go kill anything unclean. And then God said, do not call that which God has cleaned unclean. Right? Talk about the Gentile, Cornelius. He ended up going to Cornelius, and the Gentiles got the Holy Spirit. So when you're calling a Christian a sinner, you're calling them unclean, and you're slapping Christ in the face saying, you know what, your blood wasn't good enough to clean this person. That's what you're doing, in okay, effect. Now, see, you see? So, so, yeah. So, so, the Bible literally says in First John that He cleanses us from all sin. We're no longer sinners before Him. In actuality, it's not this false Calvinistic view of imputed righteousness. That's false. That's imputed means accounted as, right? So, that false doctrine of imputed righteousness is like a covering. But the inside of the cup is not clean. Jesus said to clean the inside of the cup. And that's what that's what his blood does. Okay. Yeah. I think it just is confusing to me, like if we don't have a sin inherent issue, then then we wouldn't need a savior. Like if you can choose to not Sure we would. No. Because if you could just do it on your own, then you would You can't do it on your own. The Bible's clear about that. Because of all the negative influences in society, because of sin entering in the world. You have all these negative influences to be tempted in your flesh, and you have no power to overcome it outside of Christ. So you're going to eventually sin outside of Christ. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. He said, with, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible, right? Abide in me and I in you, and you'll bear much fruit. He said, you shall know them by their fruit, right? So, my wife was actually healed miraculously from something. Yes, she was. Then she's not infertile. So basically, according to you, it was a miracle. So just basically, you don't believe that like we have a natural sin nature. It's not what he said. Say what? Sorry. She's interrupting. I'm sorry. So you just just don't believe that we are born with inheritance. It's basically we're not born sinners. The Bible doesn't teach that. That's what you. That's what the Bible teaches. I mean, if you can show me where it says we're born sinners. This will be fun. Psalm 50, you're going to Psalm 51? My mother, my mother, my mother. 
was the sinner. I was born in it. Because of his mother's sin. In sin, my mother. Okay, so not David. My mother. It's on you, dude. No. Probably there's arguments happening here. I'm gonna go do research in the Bible and I'll come back to you in about ten minutes. Cool. So men are not sinners, but anyone who's got a uterus is a sinner. No. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna let you talk. Go ahead. You got a lot to say. Honey, this is the most half assed street preaching I've ever seen. You're on Facebook. This is you're on the internet. This is an insult to God. Do your job fully and righteously or fuck off. This is half assed. If I pulled out a phone in church, I'd die of embarrassment. I agree. my mother just popped like up you to don't know you. the scripture or something? Are you I think Googling? he's pausing to Google shit. Honest <laughs> to God. <laughs> Honey, I don't mean to be rude. I don't know you. You should get that checked out. Hmm? The spot on your chest. You should get that checked out by a different college. Yes. I don't mean to be rude. <laughs> Oh, Sorry. No, that's been there since birth. Let's just like, then you're good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I know your your GoPro knows that you're Google. EMT it. nerd. Oh no, his GoPro pokes oh, points at people. Did you, he had his phone down here. This is what I said that he said. Oh. If I did he, that, if I did that in fucking class, that's crazy. God would judge me for being dis dishonest. Student code of conduct, man. Sound. You're on campus. So, you're ashamed of yourself. You have to Google what you're doing. Let's keep that in mind when we lie. What's up, man? You guys got questions? Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Literally, he's on the internet. For all have, for all have sinned sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. So we're not all born sinners, right? Well, it says all have sinned. Is a pa it's a past tense word. Yeah, but if we okay, if we are essentially guaranteed to sin at some point in our lives, are we not born sinners? No, because the Bible is very clear that we're born with a free will. In God's foreknowledge, He knows that we're going to use that free will to sin, right? Well, then because we'd already of, be guilty, yeah. No, we're not guilty. He could save us from that, but we'd already be guilty because if we're so, born, do babies go to hell? Well, I mean, God would have to make that choice. I can't. Well, I mean, let's yes let's no. let's bring it to a logical conclusion. Okay. There's no sinners in the kingdom of God. Yes. We know that, right? Scripture Scripture teaches there's they're, they're all ex sinners. They're all clean by the blood. So a baby doesn't have the opportunity consciously to receive. The gift from God and repent of their sins. It's like so, at that point. If it's like getting stopped at that point, like I born a baby, coming so, to some point uh, in my life, I would lie to my parents, lie to my friends. I would have sinned. Well, here. So if my life continued, because of be that sin. false doctrine from Augustine, that's where they get this infant baptism from, because now they have to find out in their fleshly means how to take care of original sin, and so they baptize infants. That's what the Catholic Empire does. That's what other people do too. They baptize their infants, thinking it takes care of some false imaginary original sin when really babies are born innocent in fact it says that it says that so so in Romans 9 in Romans 9 you see this between Jacob and Esau it says having never done good nor evil so they haven't done good nor evil so, we are by nature children of wrath do you want me to explain that are not you fucking shit. Why okay, then. Explaining shit to so, me. You're not good at it. You've yeah, been okay. explaining shit for an hour and it hasn't been. So yet. that scripture she's talking about, when you look, when you research it in, in, in the Greek language, that word nature, it's talking about a habitual nature, right? So you've done it for so long. When you've done it for so long, right? Because you're a child of the devil, you're children of wrath because the wrath of God is upon you. And that nature, if you look it up in a Thayer's Greek lexicon, it's talking about You've done it so much, it becomes like a second nature. Like somebody who's practiced it for so long, it's become habitual. And so sin is habitual. It's a free will choice. Nobody's going to be able to go to God and say, Hey, I was born this way. Why don't you let me in the kingdom? No, I created you innocent. So you can't blame some sinful nature on, on sin at all. So, yeah. So do you just blame it on the fact that it's fun time? Based gospel or faith-based gospel? No. What is the biblical definition of works? Um, like in Galatians. I am not super sure about my opinion on this, so I'm not going to Okay. So scripture talks about works, right? We're not saved by works. What Paul's talking about is somebody who in the flesh tries to fulfill <laughs> the whole law of Moses to be saved. Yeah. That's it. Not talking about doing righteous works or anything like that, because Jesus does command us to do something, and that's repent. He commands us to have faith. That's turning from unbelief to belief. That's a work. It's a, it's a work of righteousness. It's a work of faith. It's not, so we have to define what works is. So James says, faith without works is dead being alone. You can't just sit in your couch and say, I believe. God's not forcing himself on you. Could you try 
you have to do something. But here's the grace. You couldn't have done anything unless Christ did that first. You see what I'm saying? So that's where the grace comes in. In fact, the grace of God in Titus 2 teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. You see? Are you done? I'm sorry. Well, I saw. Sure? Okay. I have a question. Yeah. So, what is your question? Because it's also said in the first testament. I'm sorry? What is your opinion on slavery then? Because My opinion on slavery? Yes, because in the first testament, they were stating that slavery was okay. Because well, what slavery are we talking about? I thought where God said, enslave the people who you don't like, crush their baby's heads against rocks. What's your way in on that? So, so in the New Testament, right? It's, it's, it is out of context. Yeah, she's out of context. It is. Now, yeah. yeah, it is. She's, I, you just got to ignore people like that. You really do. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She really doesn't. So. Hey, if you, if you feel, if you feel led to, to minister to her, go ahead. So, so ma'am, ma'am, um, when it comes to slavery, right? The children of Israel were in heavy bondage in Egypt, right? They were being whipped, they were being beaten for 400 years, right? For 400 years. They were in Egypt. And so actually, archaeology proves that they were in Egypt. Actually, no. No, you need to watch, you need to watch some more stuff. You're, you're, you're thoroughly uneducated on biblical archaeology. Thoroughly. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile. You have no knowledge of biblical archaeology and what they found in, in the land where they call Goshen. That's right. That's where I was getting to. They're indentured servants, right? So... Just like when you're in the military, and you're in the military, you go in the military, then you're, in a, you're an indentured servant. They pay for your college, you serve the military. Now, these, these laws on whipping slaves, their indentured servants, are, are instead of sending them to jail, they beat their slaves for stealing something. We're not talking about like antebellum slavery in the United States. That's not what that was, okay? Obviously, that's wicked. We're you you got to do some research on what indentured servitude is in the Bible. And don't you can't compare that to antebellum slavery in the South. It's not the same. Well, I'll give you what Jesus said in Matthew 19 about marriage. And I'll give you what Paul said. So in Matthew 19, Jesus said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So God's binary, he created male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, female. So Jesus, when talking, when rebuking divorce, he's talking about the biblical parameters of marriage, which is a male and female. That's the only marriage that God's ordaining. 1 Corinthians 6, and this is just one of many in the Bible, in the New Testament. I'm not even going to the Old Testament. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. These are all things that will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says effeminate, nor abuses themselves of mankind. Now that word effeminate is talking about people that submit themselves to sodomy, right? That's, no, it's not a, it's, it's not a stretch. Abuse themselves of mankind are homosexuals. They will not enter the kingdom of God. They didn't have that word. Okay, let me explain that. Let me explain that. The word, excuse me, excuse me, the word homosexual didn't come out until after the King James Bible was written. So the way they describe homosexuality in the King James Bible is different. But if you go to the Greek, the, the root word for these, it'll say that. That's not true. It's actually a catamite. A catamite is not necessarily a pedophile. Actually, no. Actually, effeminate, the Greek word is somebody who submits to that, not somebody who's forced into it. So no. Also, no. Okay. I get you. That's the modern definition of effeminate, but I'm talking about what the Bible describes as effeminate. Because King James words are a little different. You got to get an 1828 Bible, okay. oh, uh, 1828 Webster's Dictionary, mm -hmm. and then you'll see what that word means so in the King James. Was effeminate back so it's somebody who submits themselves to sodomite acts, basically. And it's not a pedophile, because actually it's the, op it's the other receiver of a pedophile. It's somebody, it's somebody who willingly submits themselves to being 
doing those acts. And abusers themselves of mankind, abusers themselves of mankind are somebody who's a homosexual. And that's, the Bible is very clear about homosexuality. Anybody that tries to use the Bible to justify homosexuality is so ignorant. I'd rather you say, I'd rather you say, you know what, I reject what the Bible says. That would be more honest. However, also the King James translation has been known to be the translation used after the colonizers came over and tried to implement their ideologies and their thoughts onto other people. Okay, can I explain that? Okay, so what the slave masters did, they cut out all the scriptures that talk about freedom right? And they gave it to slaves at that time so that they wouldn't get this mindset of, hey, we're free in Christ. They actually deceived them. That doesn't make the Bible untrue. Just because somebody uses this to do that doesn't mean the Bible's not true. They're using it wrongly. I mean, Thomas Jefferson did the same thing. They would take out scriptures that talk about freedom and freedom in Christ so that they wouldn't get in their mindset. They used it as a tool of bondage rather than a tool of freedom. Okay, but what makes you think that people who translated the Bible many years later didn't cut out certain sections that may have thought to have explained some aspects of things like homosexuality, some things like... I see where you're going, but have you ever researched the ancient manuscripts at all? Yes. I would encourage you to do that because that's where your answer is going to be. Multiple debates over the years, multiple debates about what certain parts mean, about if it means actually. Oh. Anyways, here's Tel Aviv University professor Israel Finkelstein, one of the top biblical archaeologists in Israel, right? Zero, and tried their best to determine what certain things meant back in the day. But the certain things are still in the Bible doesn't reflect the basic fact that Canaan was dominated by Egypt. Speak your truth. She's talking over you. I'm sorry. The account is anachronistic, not historical, is also suggested by archaeological exploration of identical and identifiable sites mentioned in the Bible. No trace of the passage of 600,000 families has been found by archaeologists. That's not true. Quote, Tel Aviv University professor. Of course he would say that. Biblical archaeologist in Israel. I would find another archaeologist. Because there are, there's like, there's, no, hey, look, believe what you want, but they have found Joshua's altar on, on that, they have found the Red Sea crossing, they have found Mount Sinai, they have found Mount Sinai, they have found Mount Sinai, they found the Red Sea crossing, keep telling you that. Keep telling yourself that. How do you think we lost? I don't. I don't. How do you think we lost if you if you want to believe that, that's your business. Yes, it is my but business. But the archaeologists, I, I have I have found archaeologists that have found evidence of Israel's existence in Egypt. You on the internet. That doesn't make you a sore. Anyway, ma'am, I'm gonna get back to you. These are hecklers. We gotta ignore them. No shit. So if they're talking over you, then we can still have a conversation. I know you're with them, but we're having a conversation. It's so funny. With people our age. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well then walk away. No, oh, definitely not gonna okay, walk away. Okay, this is very interesting. Excuse me. <laughs> Look how many followers I have. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Okay. Um, wait, I just want to. Okay. So, Romans 7 21. Yes. 25. Yes. So I find this law at work. Although I want to be good, evil is right there with me. That's right. From my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of okay. my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Right. Thanks be to God who delivers me from that. What Bible don't, version is that? Don't interrupt Excuse me. Excuse me. What don't Bible version is that? Don't interrupt me. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa. Don't interrupt me. Don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me. I'm done. I'm done. No, no, go. No. No, I'm done. I'm done with you. You don't put hands on me. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not talking to you. You're, you're getting violent. You're getting violent. You're getting violent. You're not a born again believer getting violent. Yeah, so, you know, obviously, there's different ways of sharing the gospel. But at the end of the day, you, know, you can't say that. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Uh, advice, just so not so many people, not so many people like just hate you. Um, the big red signs kind of give up a bad vibe. Like if you want to, people to truly come talk to you, are you a believer? Uh, no, I'm atheist. Okay. Okay. What, what are you saying? <laughs> no.
I don't know. All right. Excuse me. What are we playing? What's up? Okay. So, well, first of all, first of all, okay. I'm not going to take advice about preaching from an atheist. Okay. okay. That's yeah. Fine. If that's you want to talk about other things, that's fine, okay. because the Bible is very clear about that. All not, I'm saying is, yeah. last time, there was a man who just sat in a chair with a piece of paper that said, talk to me about God. He kept an open doesn't mind. doesn't matter. That's him. And that doesn't mean that's any different. I mean, that's good that he did that, and I'm not against that. he didn't receive any hate for it. Okay. That, that was the thing. Okay. So listen, receiving hate isn't indicative, indicative of the truth, of what's preached and, and the method of it either. Because they crucified Jesus. If we're going to use that logic, then Jesus was wrong, the apostles were wrong, because 11 of them got martyred, including Timothy, which was Paul's disciple, only John, but he was persecuted. So if we're going to judge the, the message and the method based on hatred, then all of Christianity is wrong. All of it throughout history. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So we can't judge... We so can't judge. Like you the, can't, we can't judge the way the message is being. How do I say this? Like presented based presented, on. Yeah. We have to for for a biblical believer, a Christian, we have to judge it based on the Word of God, or or God Himself. I mean, that's me. I, I I'm I have the fear of God, and I'm very careful to not overstep my bounds and what I can and can't do in preaching. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I get yeah. So. Yeah. What's up? Okay. I, I have a question. Yeah. An actual question. Okay, cool. Um, and it's not a question about scripture and quotes. Okay. Because that's not relevant here. As okay. Teacher, right? I, I have a question about Wait, you. Wait, did you see okay. that TikTok too? No. no. Why, do you, why do you believe? Okay, so. What do you believe for? Based on what I was delivered from and the power of God that delivered me from what I was lost in. I have a great love from the Lord to go out to lost people, according to the word of, of God, and share the word of God to them. Because, okay, here's my thing. Like, oh my God, I'm really... Do you believe people should be happy? Happiness is not the chief goal. But do you believe that people live better lives when they're happy? It depends on what makes them happy. If, if what makes them happy is destroying their soul, then no. Okay. Because... <laughs> I use. And I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna laugh at you and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yell at you and I'm not gonna call you names. It's immaturity, it's okay. Um but I used to be angry, you know? I used to I went to church every day, I read the Bible, I did the whole thing. I was non denominational, I was Catholic before that and I did the whole thing and I lived an angry and judgmental and just, it added wrinkles. It was stressful. It, it brought Sorry. blood pressure up. I'm not angry or stressed, so I don't live that kind of life. Gas my family. Your sign just says different. Repent of your sins and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's angry. Yeah, I love it. Wow, you guys are sensitive. No, it's so. Wow. You can't handle the You should feel ashamed of your sin. That's a lie. That's a lie? Yes. Then what are you doing right now? It's a why false accusation. Us? Really? Because really? I love your soul. Really? Mm -hmm. Then why are you telling us we're all going to hell and that we're going to burn? Because according to the Bible, I, you are. Her father did her way. So do you consider gay people? Spank her. So wait. I don't mean like with an actual whip. No, of course. She knows what I mean by getting a whooping. A, I, that doesn't sound loving to me. That doesn't sound... Really? Sound okay, so... In the past, when they would implement spanking your children the right way, 
People were people were a lot more. No, it's not. What child abuse is is telling a little boy that he's a little girl. That's child abuse. Really? Uh, I guarantee you. Have you taken that yeah. other? Because my parents actually said the exact opposite yep. to me. And telling your children lies is child abuse. Than anything else. Child abuse. I'm sorry for you. Yeah, me too. You can turn to Jesus and get that hatred out of you. Actually, um, I'm gonna go over here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I love everything about it. Come follow me. I know you aren't, but just tell them to, to, to respect you. Yeah, I'm just saying he's not going to listen to me. Yeah. If I, because he looked too good. You're just letting the house down. Yeah. He'll cheat on his wife. Um, my thing is, right? Murdering isn't a big deal. I'm, and you might turn away and not listen to me anymore when I say this, but I'm not a Christian. Okay. I'm a wicked. I, I talk I talk to many different people. I won't turn away and not listen no, to you. because I saw you turn away from two other people. There you go. And then you go. You ran away from another person. Why are you lying? So, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to you. The, here, let me explain to you the problem, okay? The problem is what you see. Hold on, hold on. I want to talk to you, but I'm not going to talk to you while they're doing that, okay? I'm going to keep moving. Okay? I want to talk to you, but I'm not going to put up with their nonsense, okay? So. I'm trying to get my point across. Sure, and I'm trying to listen, but they keep doing that, and I can't listen to you. You understand? Okay. So why don't you tell them to just chill? I'm not going to tell them anything. I'm, I, I'm, I okay, no so 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 then I'm going to keep walking if they start doing that again. Then I can walk the talk. Man. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, my thing is, hmm? I oh, watch your back. Watch your back. My belief, right? Uh -huh. My belief here um, is not condemnation. It's not any sort of thing that would make anybody feel hatred toward themselves. Because okay. at the end of the day, even though that might not be what you mean to do, it brings so much hatred toward themselves. I spent so many years thinking I was wrong, I was diseased, I was ruined. Why? And I was not beautiful because the church told me I was not. The church told you you were not loved, beautiful? Based on who I loved. Who do you, what do you mean love? I love everyone. Okay, are you like homosexual or something? <laughs> well, would you say like a slur? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, are you homosexual? I, I'm homosexual. I, I, I love everyone. Like, so you have relationships I don't see gender. I don't with everyone. See. Well, God sees gender. God can see gender. I don't. And I don't. If, if you took if a blood I, test. When I lived my life yeah. on what God said, when I lived my life on what people told me God said, I was angry towards myself and I hated others because I hated me. Okay. That's you, though. But It's not my testimony. And I can, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Um, but it brought so much more youth and love to not only just my complexion and my face but my life, right? When I started to just live in the way of not living and not sinning and not doing all that because I was scared to Doing go what to you want to do that makes you happy, right? Doing what makes me happy because right. I know if I'm a good person to others... What's a good person? A good person according is somebody who shows kindness and acceptance. Where do you get that from? I get that from me. Right. I get that from my... So you're your own God. I can be. There we go. That's the problem. A problem? Yes. Explain that to me. No, no. I'm talking to her. Man. Come on. Can everybody just chill and let no her talk? not chill. Yeah. I don't think anybody's not chill. Not, chill. not you. Not you. You're good. Explain to me why it is a problem that I am now living my own happiness. And I'm happier than I've ever been. Let me ask you a question. Let's say the Bible's true, if it was true. And your lifestyle, which is sinful to God, who created you, who loves you. It's not that God doesn't love you, it's that you don't love Him, the true God. Let's say you're... Right, but there's a, there's a reason why you don't know Him. Because He's not here, He's not talking to me. There's a reason why He's not talking to you. He talks to me, I hear His voice. I'm schizophrenic, so... Well, I don't, it's not, it's not that. It's not schizophrenia. It's God. It's God. And, and, and here's the thing. I've had demons inside of me before. I've, I've been possessed of demons. Literally. Possessed. 
like literally appearing to me, <laughs> touching me. I was in a dark place. And Christ actually, by his power, drove those things out of me, and I was free from them. I've seen my wife healed from an incurable disease in her uterus. Just because she called out to Jesus, God healed her womb. Like, I mean, it's not just, it's not just, it's not just word, there's power in the blood of Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, the true God of heaven. Now, if it were true that these things are leading you to what the Bible calls the lake of fire, it would be hatred if I didn't come out here and tell you. That would be hatred. Even though you might not think this is very loving, what I'm doing, but from God's perspective and from a spiritual realm, it's very loving because Bible because 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 if this is true and you don't believe it's true I know and you've you found your happiness and what you've doing you what makes you feel happy but happiness is not the chief goal in life so because I'm supposed if, if, to live in the squalor and sadness I was in before. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what religion you were in before. I don't know, but I know I went that to there's no there's this is this is not the same as what you're describing. Believe me, that's not my testimony. No, this is I have worse. the I have the joy of the Lord every morning. My children, one of them's 15, my twins are 12, girls, and my nine-month-old son. He doesn't really know much yet. My girls love the Lord. They worship God in sincerity. Not because I forced them. I didn't force them to convert, right? I, I let them choose what they want, right? I provide a home for them that's godly. That's my job. But I can't, I can't force them. You know, my relationship with my daughters is different than maybe somebody coming out here. I don't have much time, right? And they have the joy of the Lord. They look, hold on, right? So what you're describing, what you went through in the church is not what the Bible describes. I hear you. What, but what you're describing, sadness and this and that, is not what the Bible describes a person walking in Christ, nor is it my experience of walking in Christ. I have fullness of joy. When I'm worshiping the God, God, God of heaven through Jesus Christ, I, I play keyboard, I sing, right? I, I mean, I'm telling you, there's no joy greater. Even being with my wife, you know, sexually, is not greater than my intimacy with Christ. Intimacy, not physical, of course, spiritual. Like, he's the God that created me. Which is he healed me. Which is completely valid. And I, I'm happy that you have so, found happiness there. No, no, it, think, it's not about happiness. It's about truth. You said you live in joy. That's happiness. But that wasn't my chief motive. My, I wanted to know the truth. Who is God? Who is he? You know, what is the Bible true? Is the Quran true? Whatever. And I, and I went on that search, and I found that the Bible is the most consistent book that a man has ever read, written, right? God wrote it through men. Men are typewriters. God is the inspirator, right? He's the inspiration. And I researched the prophets of the Bible, the Old Testament prophecies that spoken hundreds of years before historical events have happened. But God does love you. But you don't love him. That's the thing. You love yourself. I can't love someone I don't know. But you can get to know him. It's like a... You know how when you have friends, I hear you. You, know you got somebody, and they're like, they're the best person. I hear you. You, you got to find them for yourself. I get it. I get it. Find for myself, and there's no way to do that. There is. There is. I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you. So is your Wiccan literature. Yeah. That was written by people. You just you don't have any literature for Wiccans. Yeah, but there's something written down somewhere. There's something written down somewhere. Oh, please. It's written down somewhere. Are you done? Before I move on, I'm sorry. I just want to know, like, why so... Why, why demean your own accomplishment with... What do you mean, my accomplishment? Exactly. I'm not demeaning you, anything. You said you were brought out of this pain. Out of this... Of course. There Bondage. Was pain there. Bondage. Bondage. Um, you said you were brought out of Filthy mind. That's me. Yep. <laughs> Damn right. Uh -huh. You said you were brought out of that, right? Filthy mind. And then you found it. Damn you right. Found you found You did that. And no, no. You, you take Jesus did. Jesus did. Yes. You take your experience and you bring it up to somebody. But it's else. not about experience. It's about truth. Experience I is I a side like note. So. All these things are side notes to the truth, right? This isn't truth, though. Truth is According to you. 
Okay, there's no science in the Bible? Not besides things falling and gravity happening. No. There's a lot of art. Is archaeology a science? Yeah. Archaeology is a science. Okay, there's a lot of archaeology in the Bible. There's a lot of archaeology of finding out what things, what people said. Okay. But what those people said were not factually based, and that's yes, okay. Yes, they are. Because Wiccan isn't factually based. Listen, the Bible, the Bible is the most attested manuscript out of any writings in, in, in history. You're most attested. Most attested. Okay, go ahead. I, like, I'm not saying it has to be factually based. Wiccans aren't factually based. <laughs> I, I worship Greek gods. Like, those aren't factually based. Those are demons. <laughs> they can be. Um, and if they are, then I'm worshiping demons. But That's not those good. demons make me happier than I've ever been. Yeah, but let me ask you something. What if a demon makes you happy with a hidden motive of destroying you? Then I would be destroyed. That's right. But you wouldn't know that because I know about demons, okay? You wouldn't know that in your current condition because these demons that you're worshiping and following, they just want to keep you in your current state so that when you die, you're going to end up in the lake of fire because they don't want you to know God. They don't want you to know Christ. In fact, if you talk to demons, try talking about Jesus to demons. See what happens. I didn't mean to say why. I can talk about it. No, but you're right. No, but you're right, though. You're right. I'm telling you, man. I'm that telling you. I've done that before. I'm just saying, they they hate Jesus Christ. They hate Jesus Christ. Yes, they do. The true Christ, when you have the power of God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what you think. But, but, but at the end of your life, you're going to find out that that goddess of love was truly hateful. No, I guess he Because it's like, it's like a smooth pimp, right? Smooth pimp. Smooth pimp will come up to you with a promise of money. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. You know, I'm going to give you everything you want. Like a sugar daddy, right? That sugar daddy is making you happy, giving you everything you want. But yet, behind in his heart, he's just using you. He's going to destroy you. That's what those demons are doing. People, especially in Atlanta, will go to a pimp out of desperation. Though. And you did. I didn't come to them out of desperation. But you just said that you were so sad. I was and sad you were lost. and then I found myself. And I was happy. Well, I thought you were then wicked. Then I found wicked. Okay. Well, I was already happy, and it makes sense. Okay. But again, happiness, happiness is not the truth. You could be happy and alive. That's the whole thing. I'd rather be happy and alive than have my accomplishments and my overcoming my battles and my addictions and all my demons be reduced to somebody else did it and I was just there. Yeah, somebody else did it for me. Jesus. I find that so sad for you. Why? You don't give yourself any credit. No. You don't give yourself any love. You're just giving yourself too much credit. Of course I give myself love. The Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. I love myself, therefore I love my neighbor. I don't love myself in a worshipful way. You called, you called the women here filthy. I didn't call all the women filthy. I was talking about filthy mouths when they're cursing. I was rebuking their filthy mouth. I didn't say they're filthy just because they're women. They're filthy. I have three daughters and a wife. You singled out more women here than you just called Because most of the women are doing the talking. Because we have things to say, we're tired of being Well, violent. you don't have to be cursing at me. I feel like their point doesn't have to be mute just because there's... Well, I'm not going to listen to it if you're cursing at me. I don't, I don't take that. Well, some people here weren't cursing and you turned I know. just cuss. Well, it's called discernment. When you can... No, it's called when you can, No. If, if, you can, if you can tell where a person is going and the type of attitude they have, you know, I cut it off. I've been doing this for a while. Like you, I'm giving you time because you have a different type of attitude, right? You have a different type of attitude. You're very pleasant to talk to. So, so I, you're not sitting here cursing at me. You're not sitting here doing that, you know. So I'm going to spend time talking to you. See what I'm saying? Which I completely understand. Yeah. Um, I just, I find it so sad, I guess. Maybe from your perspective, but because I'm not sad. There's no self-love there. What? You why, would you, why would you assume that? As a Christian on this particular topic, like, you're a Christian. Yes, I am. Are you a sinner? 
I'm not. Are you a sinner? Everybody. No. Are you a sinner? My forgiveness is in Christ. Are you a sinner? Do you do you sin every day? If you sin every day, you're not a Christian. So don't tell people you're a Christian and a follower of Jesus if you're also encouraging them to sin. What does it take to be a Christian? Repentance from sin and faith in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. What does it take to be a Christian? That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, repent, right? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. So what does it take to be a Jew? Uh, Jew? Like Jewish? Well, there's people that are born Jewish. They're born Jewish because it's a culture, it's a race, you know, so, so, so. But then there are also people that convert to Judaism and they consider themselves Jews. So Be because because modern day Judaism is not true Judaism according to the law of Moses. It's not. So what does it take to be a Muslim? To to recite what is it, the Shahada? That's what it takes. And how do you know all this? Because I've looked into it. I mean, okay, looked into which it. Which is understandable. I'm not saying you didn't know it. Yeah. So when you look up the definition of Christianity. Okay. What is the definition of Christianity? Well, the Bible says that they were first called Christians at Antioch. And if you look at the Greek word for Christian, when, when you look into the definition in the Greek of a Christian, it means from Christ, of Christ. So there is a worldly religion Christianity, right? Right? Christianity. And so that word is tossed around like a dirty rag. And so um, we got to really be biblical about what a Christian is. A Christian is simply somebody that's of Christ, that walks as Christ walked, which is free from sin in him. Because he lives in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Jesus said, if you open the door, my, me and my Father will come in, right, and sup with you. So we're, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Bible calls this body the temple of God. And so God lives in me. You see? see, when I said I was a Christian, you didn't okay, rebuke me. I didn't because, rebuke you? No, you didn't. Because all I needed to do to be a Christian, from what I was told, not just what I was told, but what I believed as a Christian, was to believe in Jesus, yeah. that he was a prophet, prophet, that he was a prophet of God, that no. he was God's son, yeah. that he was the Father, the Holy Spirit, the whole thing. Right? What, what? I believe it. Right? Okay. So I did. And that made me a Christian, I would think, yeah? No. Jesus said in John chapter 3 that you must be born again. Whosoever is born of water, yeah, born again. Not necessarily, yeah, their baptism is... Because I was baptized twice. Right, but if, you're, if you don't have biblical faith, then you're just a wet sinner. No, I did. Right? I did, I believed everything blindly. Did you turn from sin? Did they tell you repentance is, is required? I'm pretty sure I repented. Well, that's I what... I forgiveness every day. I went in confession. I just Were you Catholic? I was Catholic for a while. Okay, so was I. And then after that, I mean, I was denominational because I thought, well, the Catholics are wrong, right? There's a B. I'm not a Christian. No, I didn't swat it. I just went like that to get it away. I'm not trying to kill it. Um, so, and when it comes to like homosexuality and everything, uh, would you say that like sexual attraction is a sin or the act of sexual or of homosexual homosexual act? Well, sin is from the it starts in the heart. So, if you're tempted, it's not a sin, but if you submit to that temptation and you you have that attraction, it becomes lust. Yes. And that's a sin. That's what Jesus was clear. He said, if you look upon a woman with lust in your heart, or a man, <laughs> you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. So God looks at the heart, not just the outward act, but the heart, right? So yes, a homosexual attraction would be considered a sin. Only if you act upon it? No, if it's in the heart. No, if, if you just like, if you think about it. If you're like, oh, he's cute, like that's... <laughs> oh, <he's> cute. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I just so personally for your religion, it, 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 it's only yeah, if you like, have like, it or both. Like, no. If you have, I, the if you have an sin, attraction. Like if you have the temptation. Of, so can, I just explained this to him. Can I rephrase and then you tell me if that's correct? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So basically you are saying that temptation is not a sin. 
Jesus. No, because Jesus was tempted. Okay. So temptation, not a And God knows if it's temptation or not. Having an attraction is you submitting to temptation. Yes. Because you see a man. So how do you differ differentiate between temptation and attraction? So, because if you're attracted to a man that you want to do lustful things with him, that's a sin. So how can you only be? How can you only have temptation towards a man then? Because the devil tempts. God doesn't no, tempt. No, but like, what, is that, what would that look like if you just had temptation towards a man? I don't know. Everybody's different. I don't know how you came to that. Everybody's different. Some people have been molested when they were younger. I had a friend, brother in Christ, who was molested by a man. And, and his whole life, before he came to Jesus, he was trying to prove himself that he wasn't homosexual by sleeping with women because he'd been molested. It was, a, it was something that really traumatized him that another man did to him. Until he found Christ and he was free from all that, he had to prove to himself that he wasn't homosexual. Now, some people would say, hey, I was born homosexual. People that have submitted and given into that, they would say I was born homosexual, so how would you, which isn't true. Okay, but if it was a woman that molested How him, would you, you go around like scientific evidence that people, like homosexuality is genetic? Well, it's a ge the Genome Project. I think it was out of Harvard. They actually looked into that. And there's no gay gene. Not, there's not necessarily a specific gay gene that they can identify, but no. there's plenty of other traits that you can't specifically point well, there's at a gene. Influences, sure. There's yeah, influences. There are, there are now, a, a child can be conformed to something. Right. So, but that doesn't mean they were born that way. So you can say there's a predis. You can agree that there's a predisposition towards a certain. Not being born that way, no. But they can be influenced that way. Like be, a baby is innocent. There's there's nothing they've done good or evil. There's, there's proven hormones in the world that determine femininity yeah. and masculinity psychologically. After yeah, but and it femininity and okay, 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 okay. Some men have more estrogen than others, but that doesn't mean they're homosexual. That just means they have more estrogen. And some women may have more. T like my my some women grow facial hair because they have more testosterone. That doesn't mean that they're yeah, a lesbian. I'm talking about for personal traits, like psychologically, not only physically. It's still a sin in the Bible. That doesn't influence them to be a homosexual. You're not naturally being made that way. Okay, I have to go. They're still a male and a female. Regardless of whether I agree with you, I still love you. Yeah. Take care. Take care. I don't understand the distinction between temptation and attraction. Yeah, so, it's, so let's say a thought came to my mind. Didn't come from me. Came from somewhere else. You wouldn't understand that because you don't know how the devil works, okay? There is a devil, and he throws thoughts at people, and, they t and he tempts. The Bible is very clear about that. So when I get... It's that easy. You can accuse me of that if you want. I don't care. So, so when you get tempted with a thought, you got a choice to make. You can say, man, that girl looks... Man, she looks good. I want, you know, like, I want to have sex. I'm married. If I did that and I submitted to that thought, I'd be in sin. Okay. And I'd feel dirty. Yeah. Okay? That's happened to me before. Okay? So... <laughs> what? So, that's happened to me before. So, so, in Christ I'm perfected, yes. But I could sin, all right? I'm not a sinner because Christ has cleansed me. But there is a possibility that I could sin in the future. I don't have to, though, because of the power of Christ in me. Now, you know, I get tempted, I could choose the way of escape. Like it says in Corinthians, and reject it. Not necessarily, yeah. Okay. It could be if you submit to that thought. Well, we were born heterosexual because and you can prove that by what parts you have. You have, you have, you have all your systems in your body. You have all 100% except your reproductive system. You have half of a reproductive system, the man has the other half. So if you, so, so we were born, all of us were born heterosexual. That's the way God created us because he formed you that way. He created you a female. You can disagree with that. I'm just telling you what the Bible teaches. I don't you, you don't have to agree with it. But the right old age. I mean, it's basic biology, man. You, you get a blood test, it, it'll tell you XX or XY. It's that simple. I mean, some people have XXY. But they're still male or female. That's a genetic mutation. That's not the norm. Okay, but it might not be the norm. No, it's not. It's a genetic. It's very, very, very small minority genetic. It's 
it's, it's, it's a genetic mutation. Genetic mutation. It's not normal. And completely demean their existence. I didn't demean their existence. I'm just saying you can't use that. Hold on. You can't use that as an argument for homosexuality. You can't. We're not using it as an argument. Some people do though. Some people do though. Which is not if I'm a yeah. We're not all those people. Actually, did you know that every one in a hundred people? Did you just look that up? Yes, okay. I didn't remember this specific <laughs> but uh, for intersex people, every one to two in a hundred people are intersex, which is a large majority of in the U.S. Okay, again. There's a lot more influences now than there were 20 years ago to be that way. On media, on... Yes, it is. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a choice. You are not biologically made it intersex. No. No. I would... Please, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Filthy mouth women. What does your blood say? What does your blood say? Are you a man? Were you born a man or a woman? Yes. No. Yes. Stop trying to be a man. You're not a man. Me too. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, I you're no you're no more than a man. Than, like, what does your blood say? If you were to take a look on the intersection. Come on, my followers. Come over here. She's been following me all day. You've been following me all day. What's up? Yeah, come on. You've been following me all day. You came here. We were already yeah. here. This kind of you thing followed us. It's like by showing up here. Hey, the way we got me younger. Shit, we got me. Know who they are. Believe who they are. I've been through hell and back to get to where they know who they are. It's I don't think so. Excuse me. Also, yeah. You call yourself a Christian. You are. What, what, are you, what are you saying? I'm sorry. But also, it just feels like you're invalidating other people's like. No, the Bible does. What they've been through. What they've been through. And what they Take it up with God, young lady. Okay, but what they've been through and what they know in their heart is true. What they know in their heart. Doesn't they matter. They can still be deceived. And it's something that they can't help. They really sure it is. Everybody has a choice. You can believe what you want. It doesn't mean you're right. If a million people came and told me that lie, it doesn't make it true. The truth stands alone. Nobody has to believe in the truth for it to be true. But a lie, a lie only stays alive when people perpetrate that lie. A lot of people say they're Christian. Well, then you're not a Christian. Biblically. Biblically, you're not a Christian. You're deceived. I'm sorry. In Christ, there's freedom. Not according to Jesus. Doesn't matter. You're your own God. You do what you want to do the way I want to do it, and God is going to conform to me. You're lost. Anyway, what you got to say? I'm, I've been talking to her all day. She's good. She's good. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Okay. So I grew up in the church. What does that mean? I grew up going to church. What does that mean? What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> who, who has? Okay, hold on, hold on. Who has an actual question that doesn't have a stinking attitude? Okay, I just think you do. All right, come on. come on. So, what about people like me? Okay. Where? What, what are people like you? Well, I'm gay, right? You so, mean you're happy? No, I mean, okay, I'll say homosexual, I'm homosexual. Okay. So, what about, like, people like me, I was never molested, I never had any outside influences, my family brought me to church, okay. they're against homosexuality. So you chose. I didn't choose, no, 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 no. Well, you're I, deceived. Then. I physically am, cannot be attracted to women. Like I have tried. That's what you've me. told yourself. No, 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 no. I've tried. I used to pray. I used to pray every night before I went to bed, crying that I would wake up straight because I was so afraid to go to hell. And nothing changed. So, how are you going to say that I chose when I've been through all of that? When you die and you stand before God, you're not going to be able to tell Him, "Well, I didn't have a choice, God. You created me like this." You're still going to go to hell. So, so you have a choice now to forsake that which is sin and turn to Jesus Christ, regardless of your background. Okay, everybody sins and every sin is equal in God's eyes. Not true. Every sin is equal in God's eyes. No, it's not. It says that in the Bible. No, it doesn't. Show it to me. On your way to being Huh? No. 
I don't. I don't. I don't. How do you know the Bible? What's up, man? Oh, hey. How you doing? Good, good. What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Oh, Casey. Casey, nice to meet you. I'm Adam. You got any questions? Why people are angry today? Because they hate the truth. Yeah. I've been telling them nothing, but we've been telling them nothing but the truth all day. This, they hated Jesus. They hated the apostles. You know, the narrow, the way is narrow and straight, but the way is broad. The broad way is broad, and many, many go in there. So, when you tell people the truth, so a lot of people in here will tell you they're Christian and believe in God, but yet they're homosexual. They sin every day. They lie. This is not what the Bible looks like as far as a testimony of a believer. It's just not. Jesus actually literally said, you shall know them by their fruit. Yep. And so if somebody says they're a Christian and they walk around in sin all day, I'm going to say, no, you're not my brother in Christ. You're not my sister in Christ. You may say you are. You may be deceived, and I'm going to tell you the truth as a, because I love you. Yeah, Jesus says they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Exactly. And Isaiah as well. But exactly. That's right. So. I was going to say, man, so like I know, I, know it's, I know it's hard to be out here doing this one. Well, I mean, we're, we're pretty much used to it, man. I mean, I've, I've been knocked out. I've been assaulted. I've had my sign burned. I've had my hat stolen, equipment destroyed, pee thrown on me, spit from people who say love is love, right? But even me, I would never do that to my worst enemy because God has put love in my heart to tell the truth and take whatever abuse I have to take if peradventure the Bible says or hopefully they change and turn from their sin. I mean, I, I remember one time at a Ariana Grande concert we were preaching outside and there was a mob of like 60 people or something wanted to tear my head off. And there was a few people in the crowd that were watching this and how we conducted ourselves. When across the street, one of them was in tears. And she was so deceived about this whole love is love, what people say love is love, but really it's hate. And she saw it on display. She saw that we were being loving by telling the truth and not reviling evil for evil. And, and it actually affected her. She was in tears, man. I was praying for her and everything. I hope she went home and gave herself to Christ, but I don't know. So, you know, it's just love, bro. It's love, the love of God. The Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. So we're willing to come out and talk to students. And if there's, if there's people that are going to act up, they act up. What am I going to do? I can walk away, which is what I do. I just walk around. Crowd disperses a little bit, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Hi. You were over there too. Yes, I was. What's your name? Um, Isabel. Isabel, nice. I'm Adam. Yeah, did you have a question? Um, I don't know. I'm. I guess I'm just wondering what. I think earlier you said that you were out here because you think that it's loving to give out the message, right? Sure. To like, because sure. you want to save people, right? No, I don't. I can't save anybody. Okay. Only God can. Okay. It's our job to tell the truth. Sometimes we rebuke people and call out people's hypocrisy. Okay. Sometimes it's sharply, too. I mean, uh, Scripture's clear about rebuking. Oh, that's pretty cool. I want to get a pair of those. <laughs> that's cool. Anyway, um, uh, you know, we rebuke, exhort. Sometimes I answer the crowd based on how they're answering me. Sometimes I'll just walk away. It just depends. It's no less. It's no less love. It's just a harder word. It doesn't mean I don't love them. You know, it's like a father rebuking their child. You know. I guess earlier I was a little bit confused when you were talking about the intersex situation. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that again? Well, what is your definition of intersex? Well, I think it's someone that's not explicitly a man or a woman because they have both. Okay, so how many people is that? To my knowledge, I, I'm not. Sure. I mean, it's such a small percentage. It's a genetic mutation. It's not the norm. And it's a terrible argument to base, oh, well, us homosexuals, we don't choose to be this way. It's, it's, it's not good to base that argument on such a flimsy, you know, it, it's genetic mutation. It's not normal. It's like somebody, you know, and I'm not putting people down with genetic mutation. I'm just saying it's not, it, and, and it doesn't mean that they're any less valuable to God either. It just, it's not how God created us. Throughout the generations, there's been more and more mutations happen that have affected mankind. And that's one of them, hermaphrodite they would call them, right? Having both whatever sex parts. But the, the thing is, what I don't like is that people use that as an argument for being born gay. That's so stupid. It's not logical. You can't jump on the back of a minority of the population, a small minority of the population to say, see, we're born gay. 
the mass majority of people that are homosexual are not that way. <laughs> you know? And, and see, that's what I do too. When you deal with people like that or immature, that's what you do. You have another question or? You're so funny, buddy. Hey, I was asking, like, I don't know guys, why. What is your guys' mission? Your end goal? What are you? What are you trying uh, to? To share the truth of the gospel, to glorify God first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Share the truth, unadulterated truth. Secondly, hoping that people will hear it and go home or out here, give themselves to Jesus Christ and repentance from their sin and faith in Christ. Okay. Well, I was asking, you know, like, I'm Christian, you know, I'm Christian. Well, yeah, I was just wondering, like, the mixed signs and stuff, and you know, just kind of already, you know, like, it can kind of come off as like. You're already kind of condemning someone, you know? Well, they're already condemned. We can't condemn anybody. Right, this but, this is just opening their eyes to the condemnation that's already upon them. Right, right, right. You but see, it's so... It's just like, why this way, you know? Like, it's the way Jesus did it. He didn't have signs, obviously, but he preached against... In fact, Jesus spoke more on condemnation in hell than anybody else in the Bible. Right, but it's just like, you know, the whole point of this is to show that, you know, you repent and God will forgive you, you know? He, he will... You, you change your life. You... Like you said, convert, whatever you, the case may be. But it's that this is not a good way to tell people that. Well, know, according to who? Who's going to welcome you? According to who? Okay. I mean, look at all these kids. You first of all, you come into their space. This isn't their space. Yes, it is. It's a college campus. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Did they? Do they own this space? This is their space. No, 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 no. When, when we talk about their space, we talk about ownership. Okay. Like when I'm at my house, if I own it. That's my space because I own it, right? So, do they own this space? But it's like, it would be not, a kid's space come on, too. They come don't on. own the house and they don't own the lease. Come on. You get what I'm saying? But they get the benefits of survivorship, okay? So, because they're my children, that is their space. Okay, so, that's beside the point. They don't own this ground. It's owned by Kennesaw State, right? I'm a public citizen. We pay taxes that goes to funding the school, and they pay tuition. So this is my space, too. I went to college, too, Illinois State. I graduated there. I wish I'd go back and preach there, but I don't live there anymore. So, so this is my space as well because I pay taxes. I can say the same thing. But I don't own it, of course. Sure we have. You were in here earlier. We were preaching. Okay, cool. Well, we were preaching the gospel and rebuking people that were being unruly. So you can't judge a message based on the response from the crowd. That's just foolish. You gotta judge it based on the Bible. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going based off of the, their response. That's what I said. I was out here earlier because you know, I, like I said, I wanted to know. But it's just about, I guess, the way you say. It. You know, it's not what you're saying; it's how you're saying it. You know. Well, then we could condemn Jesus then, because he was pretty harsh sometimes. He was. Yeah. And like, so were the apostles. Jesus. But he lives in me, so I have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in me. You know, you, you should understand that as a Christian, right? I do. I just don't get how that relates to you know? Because the same Spirit that Jesus had is living in me as a Christian. Don't you understand that? Yeah. Okay, so, so if the Holy Spirit that dwells in me is the same one that dwelled in Christ, then when he preaches through me, how's it any different? I mean, I'm not raising the dead, of course. I don't have that gift. I don't have that gift of healing, okay? That's not the gift. I mean, I've seen my wife healed supernaturally. I've been demons cast out of me. I've seen miracles answered. I've heard prophetic words come to pass in my life, things like that, ordained by God. But, but I haven't actually gone and laid hands on somebody and said, be healed in Jesus' name. I don't have that gift. But the Lord has given me certain gifts to preach, and I'm going I'm to use them faithfully. Evangelism, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, you know, so discernment of spirits sometimes. Uh, but I'm not boasting in myself in those things. That's only as the Holy Spirit wills. I can't control that. I can submit to it, but I can't control it. Right? He controls it. And so, I mean, even 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 the apostles they preached, they rebuked. He he exhorted Timothy to rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. That's what we do. If somebody's cursing. I say you got a filthy mouth. Because you do. There's, there's no wrong in saying somebody has a filthy mouth when all kind of nonsense and cursing and talking about sexual body parts is coming out. No, you have a filthy mouth. You need to stop. I'm telling her like a dad would. 
There's no sin in that. It's just telling a person they got a filthy mouth. What's wrong with that? Why don't you go to those people and say, hey, you know, you shouldn't talk to that man like that. I didn't tell you what you I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, like all the people that want to come to me and say I'm hateful, it's like they're being biased to all the people that are being hateful. You come to me and say, you couldn't, you can't judge what you're doing is wrong, but yet they're judging me. That's hypocrisy. And I don't have a problem with judgment. I'm just saying. That's what you see. That's the logic in this generation. As long as you agree with them and you say what they want to hear, they like you. But as soon as you come against their lifestyle and you say things they don't want to hear, they hate you. So I don't worry about what people feel about me or how they're going to respond to the message. I worry about what God thinks and how he's pleased with me or not pleased. If I need to be corrected, then the Holy Spirit is going to correct me through through men of God that are in my life and and Spirit of God Himself sometimes. <laughs> so. What about for people who, like the individual you were talking to earlier, who was still holy, still went to church, but was also living, I think she was bisexual, she said? Okay, so what? where do you find what holiness looks like? That's the thing. I don't care what she says she is. Homosexuality is a sin in the Bible. So if you're a bisexual, you don't love Jesus. It's that easy. But why? Because, because the Bible says so, but, young lady. But, but she, but if she loves Jesus, and that's her relationship with Jesus, so what is it? This is what Jesus why said. Why is that for us to decide? This is what Jesus said. If you love me, keep my commandments. So she's proving that she doesn't love Jesus because she's doing what she wants to do, the things that God hates, rather doing the things that Jesus loves. It's that simple. If you say you love Jesus, then you're going to obey him and do what he says to do. Or else you don't love him. That's what Jesus said. You're my friends if you do whatsoever I tell you to do. You love me if you obey my commandments. This is how the love of God is shown forth. That we obey him, that we love him. That's, that's how we show we love him. We don't hate our brother. We love our neighbor as ourself, you know. Me sitting here preaching to people is not a lack of love. It's actually the height of love to tell people the truth about their life. So her, she's just adding to the confusion of fake Christianity in America by saying I'm a Christian and bisexual at the same time. That's just confusion. That's creating another God that's not the God of the Bible. That says my God approves of homosexuality. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. I guess, I guess what I don't understand yeah. is um, how that it's said that God loves unconditionally. And I believe that because I believe in God, you know. That's I, not I true. It doesn't that. say that. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible that God loves unconditionally. Anywhere. So then why? I don't understand because if he loves his creation so much and, and he would make his love conditional, why would he do that? Because there are... Okay, so God's benevolent love is shown forth to all creation. How did he do that? He came as a man, Christ Jesus, to die on a cross and shed his blood for our sins. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's forgiven. God did everything possible out of his great love to deliver people out of their sin. As scripture says in 1 John, he said, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you. So just because he died on a cross for the forgiveness of sins doesn't mean everybody's forgiven. People have to do something. They have to respond to that grace that God has given by properly turning to him and away from sin by faith, believing on what he did. And as a result, he will cleanse us from our sin, give us the Holy Spirit to live holy lives in obedience to him. And you shall know them by their fruit. They'll bear good fruit, no longer sin, right? So... The problem is that God doesn't, it's, it's not God's problem, it's people's problem. They reject his love, right? They want God to love what they love, their sin. God is very holy. He's very just. He's the most just. He's holy. So when he says something is sin, he created the universe, he made the rules, we don't get to tell God what to do. Oh, yeah. Um, we don't get to tell God what to do. We don't get to redefine the rules like you do in this democracy. You, in this democracy, gay marriage is legal because people voted for it and it became so. Which I think is something that... But you can't do that to God. You can't go to God and say, you know what, God? I'm coming and you need to accept homosexuals into your kingdom. You can't do that. He's a dictator. He's a king. He's a good dictator. He's not like a Hitler. Don't think Hitler or Saddam Hussein. We're talking about a perfectly good, perfectly just, perfectly loving being that people choose to reject by their lifestyle of sin. So it's not this concept of, 
oh, I feel so sorry for people. No, they're criminals. I was a criminal because I rejected the God of heaven and earth, the God who gave me life and breath in my womb, who I should have been praising and worshiping and thanking. I chose to despise him by my lifestyle. So that's the problem. It's not that God doesn't love everybody. It's that everybody doesn't love God. And as a result, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. God does have wrath. According to John chapter 3, the wrath of God is abiding over sinners. Right? So every sinner out here, God's wrath is upon them. If they died right now, they go to lake, they go to hell. But the love of God, here's the love of God, right? Here's the wrath of God. Here's the love of God came to call them out from under that wrath. If they'll turn from their sin and believe by faith in Christ Jesus. Right? And they got to endure to the end, of course. Uh, but God gives us the grace to do that. So they're showing not that God doesn't love them, but that they don't love God. That's the problem. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I, I guess so. So you can't, you can't reinvent the wheel and say, well, I'm a bisexual and a Christian. That's impossible. Or I'm a homosexual, I'm a transgender and a Christian because I was born this way. You can say that all you want till you're blue in the face. When you stand before God in heaven and you say that to him, the judge, He's going to be like, I don't know you, apart from me. That's what it says in Matthew 7. But in what way does that harm you? You know, for people to love the people that they love or to be who they are. It doesn't harm him any. It harms us to walk in sin. He's going to be God regardless if sinners go to hell or not. Of course, it, it doesn't bring pleasure to God that the wicked die in their sin. The Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish. But people perish because they reject God and his word. They're ashamed of God and his word. God has made it evidently clear in the Bible, and people want to pick apart the Bible. It's not real. It's written by men. It's not historical. It's not science. Oh, I mean, this has been happening to this Bible for thousands of years, and it's still here. And every time an archaeologist digs up some more, it proves the Bible true. Every, when science keeps moving forward, it proves the Bible true over and over again. God is true, and every man's a liar. And so, so people reject God. It's not God rejecting people other than in their sin when they die. You know, he's calling people out of their sin and people are saying, no, I like being gay. Actually, the Bible says it's okay to be gay. That's such, that's such blasphemy. As someone who is bisexual herself, I just, I, I I'm don't sorry. That. I'm sorry. Why are you, sorry? you don't understand it because you, you want to be bisexual. I, I and you're trying to, to be. you're trying to, conf yes, you did. Every person, okay. Then the, the rapist didn't choose to be a rapist. He was born a rapist. And, and the child molester, he can have the same argument. You know what? I was born a child molester. That's, I don't think those are comparable. Sure it is, because it's sin is sin. The Bible calls homosexuality a sin in the Old and New Testament. It's very clear. I know people are trying to twist that, but they're twisting it to their own demise. It's very clear. Even Jesus defines marriage in Matthew 19 between a male and a female. Male, female, marriage in Matthew 19. You can read it. And, and so... Um, you may, I don't think you don't understand it. I think you just don't want to believe it. I think you have an intelligent mind. You sound intelligent to me. Thank you. It's, <laughs> it's very simple. A child can understand it, right? I'm not saying you're a child. But I'm just saying, like, it's very simple. The problem is the heart. You know? You, you love being bisexual. That's who you are. That's what you say who you are. I don't want to give that up for Jesus. But yet I also want to say I'm a Christian and believe in Jesus at the same time. You're conflicted. That's it's deception. But I do. I do believe in him, and I do love him, and I believe well, in again, my relationship with him that he loves me. Again, again. If you say you love him, you have to keep what he said to keep. If you're not doing that, then you really don't love him. You, you might say you love him, and you might convince yourself that, yeah. But in Matthew 7, it deals with people like that. It really does. It says that many are going to come to me, and I can read in Matthew 7. And, and, and the reason I'm telling you this, I, I don't want this to be you. It says... Every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Homosexuality is an evil fruit, according to the Bible. So you, if you're rooted in Christ, you can't bring forth that fruit. It just doesn't happen naturally, because I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation in Christ. And what comes out of me is fruits of the Spirit. What used to come out of me as a sinner is fruits of sin. So it says, not, this is Jesus talking, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you look across America, there's a lot of people that say, Lord, Lord, I go to church on Sunday. I believe in you, Jesus. And he's saying, not everyone that says that is going to enter. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. 
See, doeth, do. That means a continual doing of God's word. Many, look at this, many will say to me in that day, what day? The day of judgment. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? So here's people that thought they were saved, believed in Jesus, standing before Jesus at the judgment, and they're saying, Lord, look what we did. We prophesied, we cast out demons. We went to church on Sunday, we fed the poor, we did all these wonderful works in your name. Look what he says. And I will then profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. There's a dividing line. Iniquity is sin. People that work sin. There's a lot of people that say I'm a Christian. A lot of people that say, Lord, Lord, go to church on Sunday. But yet they're the same ones that'll go to the club drinking, their homosexuality, they're, they're lying, they're, they're, they're calling themselves sinners and we sin every day. This is not what Jesus died for. He died for a, a pure church, right? I'm, I'm sorry. He died for sinners to purify them and make them a pure church. Apologize, I meant to read. That's what I meant to say and it came out wrong. He died for sinners to make those sinners clean, like a, like a, like a bleached white shirt, right? Can't clean a bleached white shirt without, wheat, without bleach, just like the blood of Jesus. So, it's that simple. <laughs> I, just, I hear you, I hear you. It's something to think about. I, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like if the mission is to love, then it's important to love everyone regardless. So. Okay, so then we have to look at what love is. Uh, what, I mean, I guess, but I, why wouldn't it be love to, to allow people to just be who they are and to, okay. to let people celebrate their own joy? And that, that's, that's such a beautiful part of humanity, to let, okay. that, to let that be at core part, regardless of what people are believing in, regardless if they're an atheist or if they're a Muslim or if they're Jewish or if they're Christian yeah. or, you know, any of these things. I just think it's a beautiful thing to have, you know, love all around. So I don't understand why not. Well, what's love? God's love. Now, now a lot of people say love. Again, it's the same thing a lot of people say Jesus. And they create this image of love that they say is love. And then they'll come to me and say, well, if you don't love, i.e. this image they've created of what love is abstractly, then you're a hater. You're a bigot, right? But when you look in 1 Corinthians 13, you see a description of what God's love looks like. God's love, not man's love, not what men call love or women or whatever. But it's and one of those one of those lines it says love does not rejoice have joy have happiness in iniquity or sin but love rejoices in the truth so that's a good indication that when you say oh you know people just have joy in what they're doing and have happiness if they're doing that in sin say homosexuality which is a sin is in the bible they're doing that in their fornication i love sleeping around with women it makes me happy gives me pleasure and I, I, you know I think God understands that I was born a sinner and he forgives me but I just want to keep doing this then that's not God's love in fact believe it or not two homosexuals don't really love each other because in, in deception because if they loved each other in God's love they wouldn't cause each other to sin and forsake God okay I wouldn't love my wife if I caused her to sin like, honey, we're going to sit down and watch some pornography today so we can learn some new skills. If I did that to her, I wouldn't be loving her, right? I wouldn't be loving her because that's a sin to sit there and lust after something else. That'd be adultery, right? And so happiness and joy in something that's going to destroy your soul is not love. It's not God's love, according to 1 Corinthians 13. I mean, you got to dig for it. I mean, I know you have what you think you believe in, but man, I, I please, I encourage you to look at the Bible. I, I did, I have looked at the Bible. I went to a Catholic school for I hear you. years. Um, Forget about that. I went, I went to, why? <laughs> just read the Bible. Go get a new King James Bible or King James, I mean a King James Bible and just read it and really pour into it. Like God, what is the truth? Show me the truth, Lord. I want to know the truth. Regardless of what I believe, I bring myself to you, Lord. I want you to be glorified in my life. If I'm wrong, Lord, please convict me, correct me, show me in the Bible. That's what I did. I guess 
I guess then where I get stuck in after all of that is why I give his creation free will. Hmm. If, you know, they can, if they live their lives the way that they want to in the way that they're happy. I hear you. If, if, you know. Well, yeah. love by definition has to have free will or else we're just robots. We have to choose. Because if we don't have free will, then we can't truly love. It would, then God would be accused of being some robot master that you just, which that's really the Calvinist God, technically, that he predetermines and forces people by irresistible grace. But that's not love. Love involves free will. He gave Adam and Eve a free will choice to obey, and they disobeyed him. He gave me a free will choice, and I disobeyed him in the past, right? You can't love. I mean, God isn't looking for people to love him because he forced them to. He doesn't force people to love him. But that free will choice, man, I mean, I can't force you to love me. You can't force me to love you. It has to be a free will choice, right? That's why he gave us free will, one of the reasons. So that he would prepare a people that have freely decided to forsake this world and serve him with all their heart. You gotta have free will for love to be there. You know, so. I don't know that I agree, but I respect and... Take care, God okay? You. you too. I love you. Yeah. Um, and I'm still sort of on the fence about this. It's okay. Yeah. So, um, do you believe that it's possible to live a completely sinless life on this earth? That's what the Bible promises. Yeah, that's what the Bible promises. You think like so? The reason I'm on the fence about that is because so our flesh, right? Okay. See, that's the problem. I know. Uh, take Paul for example. Sure. Romans seven. Yep. Okay, that was pre-conversion. What do you mean? Meaning that was before he found Christ. No, so, it wasn't. Yeah. This is why. I'll why, show you why. why. Why would a sinner desire to do good? They don't. Because he was a Pharisee. That's why I'll show you. But he wouldn't desire to do good. Sure he would. Uh, good by by what is. Yeah. Definitely. I'll show you at the beginning of Romans seven. It says. It says this. Know you not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law. Yep. Okay. So. He know the law. He wants to fulfill the law of God. As a, he even testifies about himself. He's a Pharisee of Pharisee. Concerning the law, blameless. So Paul wants to please God. He persecuted the church in his zeal to please God. Okay, so, so he wanted to do good. Right? So, how that the law had dominion over man as long as he liveth. So, he's about to give his testimony of trying to fulfill the law of Moses in his own flesh and coming to the end of himself and finding Christ to deliver him from the body of this death. Why, why would Paul call himself the chief of all sinners? It's not what he called himself. He said, he, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go to that scripture now. Um, so have you ever read the Bible? Of yeah. whom what, what I, that's in Romans. Well, I, um, well, no, Timothy, uh, Timothy. Timothy. Yep. Yeah. So, first Timothy, what am I thinking? I just read that the other day. Got a bad memory. So let's back up. Good. I'm pretty sure I did. Well, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, whoremongers, defile themselves of mankind, or homosexuals, yep. men stealers, kidnappers, liars, perjured persons, and if there any be other thing that is contrary to sound God, God doctrine, which is the doctrine according to godliness, which is what Paul talks about in another and another another place according to the glorious gospel of the blessed god which was committed to my trust now check this out and i thank christ god christ jesus our lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me in the ministry yep. who was before past tense he's talking about his past life here a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but i obtained mercy because i did it ignorantly and unbelief so 
He did it thinking he was doing God a service. Right, yeah. Because he didn't believe in Jesus yeah. was the Messiah. That makes sense. Please just think about it logically. And the grace of our Lord was, past tense, he's talking about his testimony, exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Now, this is a faithful saying, a worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now, is Paul saying that I'm the chief of sinners right now, or is he the chief of those that were saved from their sin? You can see it. Came into the world to save sinners. So he's the chief of those that have been saved from their sin. He's not saying that I'm a sinner now and I'm the chief of all sinners. That'd be foolish because he would be identifying himself with his past life. He's saying, I'm the I, man, I was the most wicked, right? And I'm the chief of those that God saved out of my sin. Uh, he, he just says, of whom I am chief. He came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit, for this cause I obtained, past tense, mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern. Now, let me go to Galatians 2. The same Paul, I mean, we could go to every one of his yeah, letters. Yeah, I mean, that's fair, yeah. You know, Galatians 2, talking about what Peter saying, no, the Gentiles. No, 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 no. Okay. 2 around 17. I love, yeah, I love you, right? But my book, I don't level, don't Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So when we talk about works-based salvation, yep. we're not talking about righteous works. We're talking about trying to fulfill the whole law of Moses in the flesh to be saved. Yep. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ, Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, okay? Not by works of the law, for, for the works... Oh, it's my wife. Oh, majority, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hey, honey, I'm out here preaching. Yeah. That's okay. Love you. Not all the time. Bye. Okay. So do you understand what it means to repent? She she meant to call my daughter at home. Okay. And not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while now check this out. If while we seek to be justified by Christ, right? So while we're being justified by Christ, seeking to be, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now he's destroying this thing where, oh, I'm seeking to be justified, but still found a sinner. He said, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgression. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. He, ex he describes that in Romans 7 going into Romans 8. I'm dead to the law. I can't deliver myself, right? I want to do good. I want to fulfill the works. That's why he goes like, we're not going to be justified by works of the law. But I, I, I don't find any power to do it. I thank my God through Jesus Christ, right? He's delivered me from, so with my flesh I serve the law of sin. What does that mean? That means the flesh can be tempted. That doesn't mean he's a sinner. Because well yeah like yeah. I, I I agree that like your identification is not with sin. No, so. it's not a sinner at all. I mean, in Peter it calls us holy, dearly beloved, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Nowhere is the name is the title sinner mentioned except for the backslider. Yeah, I agree. Like in James, uh, no, he says if, if there's a brother that errs from the truth and one go convert him, he saved a sinner, soul from hell. Uh, that's not the one. So anywhere it talks about sinners in the New Testament, it's talking about people that walk in sin yeah. and sin. John is very clear. He who practices sin is of the devil, but he who practices righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. So yes, we, the Bible promises complete freedom from all sin, yep. but it also says if we sin. So it's not impossible to sin. We could sin right? because we get tempted. But in Corinthians, it says that God has made a way of escape out of every temptation. Yep. Yep. So it's possible to sin, and, and John said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. That means we have turned our back on Christ and he to do a temptation and have sinned. At that point, if we die in that condition, we're lost. Say that again, I'm sorry, say it again. If we turn from Christ and sin we and die in that condition, we're condemned. So, okay, like, because there's no more sacrifice for sin, right? At that moment, it says in Hebrews, I believe, for, for we have crucified Christ to flesh. Now we need to be, we need to repent now. We need to do what John said, repent. That's why he said that, like turn back to Christ, repent. Don't do it again. It's like Jesus told the adulterous woman, go and sin no more. So, okay, so like most men proclaim, you said that if we choose to sin and we die in our sin, then we're, then we go to We're lost, yeah. yeah. For sure. And so, so if let's say, let's say you're walking on by and I just decided to stick my leg out and shoot you in my own conscience. 
Well, this is this is a hypothetical. No, okay, 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 okay. But like, I'm like, I'm I mean, like, we can't really go with hypotheticals. I mean, because well, okay, okay. Like, we gotta go with take, the Bible. Says. Take 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 any sin that I voluntarily do by myself. Yeah, if you die in that condition, you're lost. So like, so if you watch porn and masturbate, and you die, you go out, and you haven't repented to the Lord, and you haven't truly forsaken that, like God knows, and you die in that condition, you're not gonna make it. There's a lot of people that that have had testimonies where they they were in a sin of anger or something, and they die and saw hell, and God warned them. I think this was a Nigerian pastor actually. Anyway, uh, there's a testimony of a Nigerian pastor I heard one time. He was a biblical, born-again believer. God was using him mightily. And he got mad at his wife, man. He got so mad at his wife. He, and then he left the house, got into a car accident. And his testimony, he said that God showed him hell. And basically, after doing that, he warned him. He said, this is where you would be if, if, I, if, I, if you died today. And God put him back in his body. You know, that's just one testimony of others I've heard. So that backs up what Scripture says too. I mean, if we, if we die in sin, so okay, but like to me that sounds, and this is like sort of my question about it. To me that sounds like if I died today, right? And let's say I I repented and I truly turned with my ways, okay? And but okay, I was tempted, and let's say I decide to succumb that temptation, whatever it is. If I died right after that, I, I would, I would. Well, that's a big it. hypothetical because you know Jesus goes after the stray one. I mean, he's not. I mean. Well, yeah. I mean, doesn't the Bible say there's no condemnation for those in Christ who walk not according to the flesh, but in the spirit? You got to keep reading. Right. I, so, I, 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 so if you walk in the flesh, then yeah, you have condemnation upon you. Right. I agree. So, so if you if you succumb to the flesh. The temptation that comes to your flesh, you succumb to it, you better repent right away. Yeah. Like, that's happened to me before. Like, I, I would, I, I have sinned since I've become born again. I have. And when that happened, I, in fact, I backslid for like a year. I got, I got involved in a relationship. Um, and I'm not, I don't base my doctrine on human experience. Okay, I base my doctrine on what God promises and what the Bible says. And then I experience that in my life. Now, the reason why I sinned is because I chose. Yep. Not because I had to or that it's going to happen. It's because I chose to rebel against God. I got demons. Yep. Demons filled me. I had to get this demons cast out of me. Like, not this fake deliverance ministry stuff. This happened in the privacy of a home. Wait, demons? But yeah, literal but demons. Demons. I, I didn't think demons could inhabit it. They can't. But I had backslid. That's what I'm saying. I'm like... Well, I didn't have the Holy Spirit anymore. I mean, you so, see what so it says in the scripture with the house was kept, but nobody was there. And, and he brought back seven more demons more powerful than, than him, right? Because I wasn't keeping myself in the spirit. I had fallen into a sin, into a relationship. That, I, I believe that woman was probably in the occult. And I was deceived in my infancy in Christ about spiritual gifts. I, I, got, I was really confused. Though. I got genuinely born again and felt then backslid into sin. And God had mercy on me. I didn't die during that time. If I would have died, I would have went to hell. But no, a genuinely, a person who's abiding in Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, cannot be possessed with demons. No. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I no, no, agree. no. Yeah. But I wasn't in that condition. Yeah, good. But uh, it doesn't say somewhere, I may be this time, that like good and evil cannot occupy, exactly. occupy the same. Exactly. Right. right. But I wasn't in that condition. The Spirit of the Lord departed from me because of that gross sin. So you, and he allowed you, me to go good. go into it for like a year. Were you, were you given over to a depraved mind? No, no, no. Or else I wouldn't have been able to come back. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, no, no. He, he gave me over to that first season and dude i went through sleep paralysis i would i would see demons choking me i couldn't wake up i'd, I'd scream out to jesus i but the, the stronghold was that relationship i had to get that relationship out of my life and then a short time after that i had this crazy dream where the demon really manifested itself to me in my dream and then literally two weeks later it was cast out of me by a man of god by the holy spirit literal like i had to confess i confessed my sins and to the lord um, the Holy Spirit used this man to speak to whatever was inhabiting me. Didn't have any power over me anymore because I'd given myself back to the Lord, cast him out. You know, a strong man came in, bind and, and inhabited me. Ever since then, bro, I haven't, I haven't gone back. Have I sinned since then? I have. But this time, I'm not going back into it like that. It wasn't, it wasn't, whoa. It wasn't like when I fell backslid like that. Like if I ever sinned since then, 
it was like immediate conviction and fear because of what I went through. Literal fear, bro. I would go right to the Lord. And that's not a pattern, sin every day. This is something that would happen maybe months later where I would be tempted. Maybe I'm at a weak point. I would sin. If I died in that sin, yeah, I would go to hell. Even at that point, why? Not because God doesn't love me, not because God doesn't have the ability to keep me. It's because at that moment, I forsook the Lord. That's, 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 that's how much God hates sin. You see? But so, so like, this is kind of the question I'm saying. So, yeah. or, or I, I have. So, like, if you're truly, if you're truly saved, yeah. then you would, you would not depart from the Lord. Like, you would not. Scripture says you could. And James, I mean, you it's could, very clear yeah, in James. You could. You could depart from the Lord being truly born again. So, so, like, that's kind of my question. I'm like, so at any given moment, I can just lose that, is what I'm saying. But why would you have that mindset? You don't lose it. You because leave it. it. Like, okay, you like, leave it. You, to me, see, see, right now, we don't have the inherit. We're not possessing the inheritance. This is like an engagement period. Yeah, right. It's a gift. Yeah. Well, no, no. It's like an engagement period, right? Faith uh, is the evidence of things, what substance of things, evidence of things believed. It, it's indicative of like a, 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 a uh, like you have a deed to a land. But you can't, you, you can't get that land unless you travel to go get it and turn in that deed. It's like the, it's, it's kind like, of like the bond almost. It's almost yeah, like it, it's like yeah. The, the earnest of the spirit. It's like the engagement before the marriage, right? The Jewish engagement, like Mary and Joseph have. Yeah. They'd sign a marriage contract. They got to wait a year. They got to be faithful to each other. The the husband goes and prepares a house for them, and then at the marriage, they actually consummate the marriage and they go live with each other forever, basically. That's what it is in Christ. So right now we're in the engagement period. We are married to Christ in the sense of, of that, that kind of a marriage contract. But we're engaged, really, because the marriage supper of the Lamb hasn't happened yet. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's when the bride and the, and the bridegroom get married for eternity. And we're all going to be a part of that if we endure to the end by His grace. Now, a lot of people like to accuse us of being works-based, but none of this is by our own strength. That's why it's so important, personal prayer, fasting, seeking the Lord. These are not works-based things. These are works of faith. These are not works of the law of Moses. These are, these are me doing what Paul said to beat down the flesh, spend time with Christ so that I'm properly filled with oil in my lamp every single day. As scripture says, we had somebody do that and they tripped and fell right in front of us. It's crazy. We, uh, but, um, that's why it's so important to abide, as Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Yep. Right? So, and then he says, if you don't abide in me, you're going to wither as a branch and be burned in the fire. Yep. Right? Romans 11, been grafted in. Take heed, he can also cut you off. Right? These Jews, they, they, they've been cut off because of unbelief. Take heed, don't boast, don't be high-minded, lest you also be cut off. Right? Not, and, and he's exhorting people like, to stay in the vine, like all through the Bible, all through the New Testament, stay with Christ because you can't do it by yourself, right? So, and he said he goes after the one, leaves the 99 that had no need of repentance, right? So he's going to go after you if you go into sin. He's going to go after you. He went after me, right? Um, I have a hard time believing, even though it could happen, that a truly born again believer Technically, it's true. If a and we're being hypothetical here, well, like, we're being uh, hypothetical well, here. Then, then if you sin, like, if, yeah, if yeah, you were yeah, truly yeah. and and that's like multi level, because like if you're truly born again and you truly were were after the Lord's heart, if you would, it's almost like it wouldn't make sense for you to fall in the sin. That's true. So but it's it's it's, it's like multi level. Almost. No, no, no. That's true, but. There's the encouragement of abiding in Christ, though. It's not just once you're born again, you're done. It's not that. It's yeah, there's, every there's day. Salvation versus sanctification. Well, sanctification is instant as well. First Corinthians six nine, like right. Out, he said, "You are sanctified." Now you grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ, but sanctification is basically you're made holy, you're made set apart, you know, for the Lord. You don't. It's not a process of sanctification that happens. You're sanctified when you're born again. If you sin, you get unsanctified, and you got to go get sanctified again, right? Because you've defiled yourself. Um, now there are ignorant sins according to the Bible, right? You could, you could. It says, "He who knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin." Yeah, that's uh, James, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's James. Yeah, and then First John, there's a sin not leading unto death, right? I believe that's ignorant sins, honestly, personally. I could be wrong. 
So, but I believe that's ignorant sin. So, people that sin but don't have knowledge of that sin, are they? Held God's not going to hold. No, of course not. God's not going to hold people accountable for what they don't. That's not an excuse, though, because there are sins that you know you're doing is wrong. But there are, there could be, and, and we can't assume that everybody has that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But it is true because the Bible talks about this, that to him who knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. So if you sin and you don't know it's a sin in ignorance, and God knows if you truly don't know. And this is no yeah, excuse. I mean, yeah. This is no excuse. It doesn't prove sinful nature. It doesn't prove any of that. But it's an ign it's because of something that may have been developed over time through habitual practice that you might not know is a sin. Is that is that based off of so like okay, this 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 would be like an example or this is something I think of. Mm -hmm. So I read the word. Yeah. And but I could be reading the word more. So if I'm ignorant of a sin. Am I culpable because I could be doing? Is, is that, does that make sense? Not necessarily. That's not necessarily. That, that that might be putting false condemnation on yourself. It's just kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, well, like I could be reading more. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I mean, he, he, if 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 you know you're supposed to be doing something and not doing it, yeah, that could be a sin. No, that's fair. Yeah. But if you're being faithful to what God has given you, then no, no. You're being faithful. He's given you a talent. You're faithful with that one talent. He's given you three talents. You're faithful with those three talents. Because remember what happened to the person with the one talent. Took it away and gave it to one with ten talents. Because he wasn't faithful with what God gave him. Was that, was that the, the one with the, uh, the the servants? Oh, the unjust servant? Oh, I was thinking, I was thinking of a different story. My bad. No, that was, was the parable. Of, the un that's yeah, a good parable, too. The, uh, parable of the talents. He gave yeah. one five, three, and one. The one with five gained more. The one with three gained more. The one with one was like, psh. So, yeah. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're reaping where you haven't sowed, and you're, you're yeah, a hard taskmaster. Yeah. I'm just going to bury it. Here, here's your stinking talent. That was his attitude. Okay, you wicked and vile servant. Throw him into outer darkness and give that talent to the one with ten. <laughs> you know? So that's, that's, that's a fearful thing. So, you know, why would God give talents to somebody who wasn't born again? You know? So, yeah, so I'm just, go ahead. yeah, no, go ahead. I was just saying, like, I, I really just want to pose some questions to you, not as like a test or anything. Oh, I know you're not. I was, I was kind of, I know just, you're like, not. kind of engaging more. You're, like, you're, uh, what's dude, your you, you don't have a bad spirit. So. What's, 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 what's my opinion on that? But, yeah. Um, I was gonna say something else, but I, just, I could not remember what it was. It's all right. Are you, uh, you guys gonna? For example, you. Are you about to wrap it up, or are you guys gonna? Um, I don't know. It's three almost. I don't know. We have a spot till four. I'll be I'll be back here. Do you guys get this for free? I know it's kind of a yeah. weird question. You do? Yeah. Okay. We just we just reserve it. How do you guys park? Is it do you, do you have to pay? in the lot? Yeah, we oh, got to okay. pay for parking. I was just wondering because I was like I know people come out here all the time. And I was like, how do they park? Yeah. I'll, I'll be back here around the the end of October with another brother from Ohio. Um. You gonna be here? You gotta work. You gotta work, right? Time? Same time. Oh yeah, I think we'll be on the second show. Oh okay, never mind. Never mind. Hi. Hey. Oh, that's so original. Can't you guys come up with something new? I mean, that's so that's so played out. It's like they do that every time, and it's like it's new. It's like. It's just played out. Like, think of something else. Maybe you should think of something else. Yeah, like, you think out these same, same exact fucking signs every time. Uh, like, maybe you should get some new material. At least I get to get some pretty girls. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, well, you better repent. Girls, okay. Any, any, you got any more questions, bro? I don't think you understand. That's it, my man. Good talking to Adam. Adam. Yeah. Casey. Casey, good talking to you, man. You too. Take care. Hi. I was here earlier. You look familiar. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Were you here before? Yeah. yeah. Not today, but another time? Yeah, I was here another time. Okay. I think it was, uh, I was here last year. Okay, cool. What are you, yeah. a junior now? Sophomore. Sophomore? Oh, you are a freshman last year. Okay. Yeah, I was a freshman last time. And cool. I was a sophomore. That's, why you're back. That's cool. Um, hey, I'm going to Give me one second. What about Sorry. Lee? Yeah, you're okay. I have to find the verse. I just want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, about earlier this morning. Okay. So I know that in the Bible it tells you, right, when we're preaching the word of the gospel to watch the way we say things and everything. Where's it say that? In Colossians, I think. Colossians? Yeah. Four, What's that? Six. Okay. And there's another one about gentle teaching. I have my 
Oh, I have an actual bottle. Yeah, so let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, and that you may know how you ought to answer every man. That, that's not talking about the inflection of the voice. Mm -hmm. It's just talking about grace. Like, the grace of God in Titus, it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live so... So, a rebuke is not necessarily a lack of love. In fact, Paul exhorts Timothy to rebuke and exhort. Right? And, and, and even in Titus, it talks about preaching. It's being a herald, lifting up your voice. And so, you know, I mean, Jesus had some hard words sometimes too in John chapter 8, calling them, you're of your father, the devil. People that said they believed in him and they really didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Go, what was the other one? Um, Proverbs 15.1. Proverbs 15.1. Oh, you're going to Proverbs, huh? Proverbs is good. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, soft answer turns away rad. That's true. It's true. But we don't always give a soft answer. And that doesn't say you have to give a soft answer every time. Mm -hmm. But it does. That's a true, that's a true statement. I didn't see anybody in wrath. To, well, there was one girl with a pink hair. She got kind of angry. But, that was a lot. They were, yeah, they were kind of... Yeah, but I, I was basically dealing with foul-mouthed women um, like that. I mean, I, as you notice later, I started walking away. Yeah. Right? But... I rebuked them like if I was their dad. Yeah. Because I have children. Yeah. I have my, my oldest is like 15. They're all girls except for my youngest son. He's nine months. Mm -hmm. And I would rebuke them that way. Right. Like, you, you, you have a foul mouth. You need to stop it. That's all I was doing. I mean, that's not sinful at all. I'm rebuking them for their foul mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not that it's uh, sinful necessarily, but that, like, maybe, I don't know, not calling names. Because to me, like... What did I say? What name? You just, uh, what did you call them? I said she had a Jezebel spirit. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, true. And then the, filthy, the filthy mouth part. Yeah, filthy, no, fil filthy mouth young lady. It's true. Yeah, but like, it's just like, it seems like from an outside point of perspective, it seems like that didn't feel like it was something that, I don't know. Well, what should I say? Nothing? Not nothing, but just be like... Not, not well, I did. I mean, I ignore... Obviously, she wasn't responding to that. Yeah, she Some was. people respond to that. Mm -hmm. So I just leave her alone. I mean, that's what I started doing after, just ignoring her. Right. I mean, there's nothing else you can do. If she doesn't respond to a rebuke, then I'm not going to get up in her face and oh, no, get all go get in that, the wrath. <laughs> yeah, but how is that rebuke? Like, how did, did, Jesus, how did Jesus do rebukes? Well, he said, you're of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. um, he said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Call them fools and blind. Mm -hmm. Tell that fox, Herod. I mean, he had some pretty strong words. I mean, now this is a side note. Obviously, these are the Pharisees and those that sold money changers. The money changers, they were taking advantage of the people in the temple. He went, out, he went through them with a whip, mm -hmm. drove them out of the temple. He spoke a lot on condemnation and hell. I mean, so it's, it, it's not always a soft answer that's necessary. Now, could I miss it sometimes? Sure. It doesn't mean I'm in sin. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm just rebuking them. It's, am, am I 100% led of the Spirit every time? Probably not, you know. But eventually the Lord will help me mm -hmm. as a preacher to speak what I need to speak. Right. I know it's, it's tough dealing with a crowd like that. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't hate them. No, when I'm, not. Even when I'm rebuking them like that, it's not anger. I'm not angry at them. And the Bible even says... Be ye angry and sin not. Let right. not the sun, you know. Mm -hmm. So being angry at unrighteousness isn't necessarily a sin unless you go into the wrath of man. Right. Now, if I started going off on them and getting up in their face and yeah, yeah. getting into this mm -hmm. wrath of man, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sin for sure. But me rebuking them, it's not sin. And I've had some great conversations out here. No, I've saw, I've saw so. a lot of great conversations. I was just from like a, I was just thinking from like an um, outside perspective. Like if I was an unbeliever, how would that come off to as... Like yeah. if I, yeah, if I was an unbeliever, how would that come off to me? Well, I've found, the church? I, I've preached in Midtown before, and I've made it a personal goal mm -hmm. one time to just preach softly and about love. Yeah. And it still really? gets hate. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like... The Lord said that, let's go have it. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I'm just saying, like, regardless if I rebuke or I have a soft answer sometimes, the hate still comes. It's still going to come, but, like, like, it just, I don't know. Yeah. It's just like as a Christian, I just feel like gentleness and all that is just well, you're, all the way around. Well, you're also a woman, and you're built yeah, differently. Yeah, that's, that's literally what I was thinking when you said that. So, like, so you doing, you being like that is how you're built, and God will use that. 
And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would not be like that. Maybe God uses me as a man differently than he would use you as a woman. He might not use you to bring a sharp rebuke like that because you're more tender. Women are more tender, in my opinion, than men. They got that mothering, nurturing spirit. And that's how God compliments us, you know? So, you know, a, man's, a man has the image of being, you know, strong and, you know, like, I'm a man, you know, like, <laughs> woman is more, she's strong, but she's strong in the Lord. It's more of a, fem, a feminine, feminine strength. Her strength is more in weakness, which is good. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm strong in myself, but you can look and see men and women are built different. And that's okay. That's the way God intended it. Use, God will use you as God sees fit. God will use me as he sees fit. But I would never go to a woman and tell her she's wrong for being too soft. Yeah. Unless it's unless it's like really hindering a person's soul. I just wanted to hear your opinion on it. That's, that's yeah, you're good. Like, you're good. I appreciate matter. you paying I attention. Like, I was just confused. I was like, oh. Wow, I'm not above correction either, yeah, so I, I appreciate you paying attention. I wanted to wait till no one was here because I didn't want, because sometimes they take stuff out of, of course. context and, you know, so that I was, was just waiting. That was wisdom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been lied on all day about what things I've said. No, so. yeah, I saw. I oh. Are you ready to go? Yeah. I need to get some emails sent out. It was nice talking to y'all. All right. Take care. I am the lost one, weak and condemned. The one that God wants you to talk to But you're scared you'd offend And I am the outcast Rejected inside Who oh, I'm looking for answers But I'm blinded by pride So come out and preach Preach unto me Tell me the secret to eternity Be bold and speak and reach out to me No, I can't save myself But I want to be free And there's something inside you I need Well, there's something deep down inside you I need